Make some noise for yourself. Welcome to Harmontown. I'm Brandon Johnson. I'm sitting in for Jeff Davis, who we love so much. Do we not? Spencer Crittenton is not with us tonight. We love him so much. Do we not? Well, let's just get started. We love you, Downtown Dynasty Theater. Welcome to the stage, Mr. Dan Harmon. Rob Schraub! Rob Schraub, everybody. Whoa, look at that comfortable chair, boy. Oh, you just get... <laughs> get everything you want, don't you? Nice, Hello. comfortable Hello. chair. It's very nice. <sighs> For those of you who tune in for the serialized aspect of our show, mm. Schraub uh, complains about stuff, and then the next episode, people have indulged him. <laughs> he mentioned the chairs were uncomfortable. Now he's in a big Lily Tomlin uh, overstuffed <laughs> uh, prop sofa. I hope I hope you get lumbar problems tonight. <laughs> I hope that's too much comfort for this podcast. More lumbar, more lumbar problems. You guys want to go to lumbar later in Silver Went Lake? It's never was side. Would have been better if it came out clean. Okay. Um, what? Nothing. It's a, it's a hipster bar. It's, it's all about lower back support and uh, um, infusion, infusion drinks. <laughs> lumbar. Yeah. All right. There's only one. I, I, I feel like I, I, there's a voice in my head that says, Harmon, you're going to fuck this up. But I, I keep That's every. Me. Uh, <laughs> That's me. Right. Every, every, uh, every week that goes by and I don't bring this up, I, another week goes by where I, I, it's, just, it's, just, it's, it's, like, it's like footprints in the snow. I, just, I had this experience at a bar in Burbank. And I, I, I wrote down the kind of flow chart through it. I was there with a friend who kind of like, I digested it with him afterwards. So I got it all down accurately. And I, I wanted to just relay this like fan encounter I had. Um, I'm not sure now. And, and, then, and, then, and the only reason I want to do it is because uh, uh, I just found it incredibly fascinating. And, and, I, and I, uh, it probably goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, that I have no problem how you approach me. Like, like, like. I, I mean, it would be weird to punch me. I, I, a lot of people make jokes and like, I, you know, I, I, if it's helpful to you to understand, like, like, you know, I could, I could, I could tell you that there's things that are like, oh, well, how am I supposed to react to that? You know, right. but, but I also, you get one, you get one thing. Like, I've made, I, I kind of want to run through all of the things I cringe about when I think about like, like uh, so many times I've been near anybody. Uh, and I've, I, I just, I just, he had that urge to like, you know, like, Hey, what am I going to be in the same billiard hall as, as, as this person? And I'm not going to bother to what, what like that. I, I'm going to tell JK Rollins. What's up? Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to like, like if somebody goes like, that's JK Rollins. And it's like, and I'll even be the first to say, like, like maybe you, maybe you haven't even read Harry Potter, and that happens, and you're kind of like there's a there's a little blurry line. But I will say the people that usually come up to me because I'm not like, you know, if you recognize my face in a bar, probably means that you're, uh, you're 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 kinda, you're kind of deep in, and and it's usually a very pleasant experience, and sometimes it's a little socially awkward. I think I could name two times when, uh, including now this last time, this is in two in like ten years where I've been like, well, that guy is kind of evil and a dick. <laughs> but both times, I, I don't think the person didn't really know me that. You know? so, so it's like they, they, and I've done that too. I remember in Milwaukee, we were famous for, uh, one of our exports was a band called the Bodines. Uh, uh, what, was the, what was their big famous song? Bodine. Oh, I'm looking Bodine. for a runaway. Or is it going to take my heart away? <laughs> For me, or I'm gonna get the runaway. I'm a Bodine. Yeah. <sighs> and uh, I was at my uh, the 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 drawing room of Milwaukee, which was called the Uptowner, and uh, a very fancy place. And uh, uh, it, it wasn't. I, I, it, it, there was a um, there was a guy drinking at the end of the bar, and a friend of mine said, "That's so and so from the Bodines," and they gave me a name. 
And uh, and I I went up to them. My mom loved that song. I, I'm looking for a hideaway, gonna get a runaway. And I, I was I lived in Milwaukee. I did, I was 19 years old. I shouldn't have been at a bar, but it, 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 and I was like, I went up and I said like Jimmy or Jody or Gigi or whatever the name was. So I was like, my mom's a big fan of your band. Could I get an autograph? And he On signed my some hand. shit. That I looked at later and it was basically like, go oh, fuck yourself or something like, wow. like, like not, not, not like aggressive, but it was sort of like whatever I had said to him, it was, you know, it was kind of clear that he was like, here's what you get for not knowing who I am, what my song is and telling me your mom likes me. Like, here's your fucking, you know, worthless thing for sure. You're not walking out of here with anything worth anything. Yeah. And I, and I, I remember that still because I'm embarrassed that I did that, but like, uh, do I, I mean, therefore, I guess I should say not, but I, I, I don't, I don't judge anybody who ever like kind of maybe has like a moment where they're like, Oh my God, like it's you. It's like such a flattering thing, obviously. Yeah. And, and if they then like have spit come out of their mouth or they, or they, or they do the mental equivalent, which is like, they try to neg me. You know, like there's some people that do that. that they're like, people like, think like, sometimes if they're rude to celebrities, <laughs> it'll be cool. I mean, by, so I, I feel like I hopefully I've disclaimed that enough to say, like, this is not me going like I met the biggest douchebag <laughs> and here's blow by blow everything he did wrong. <laughs> but it, I mean, it is that, but it's like, it's not, that is not, <laughs> it's just, to, I still, I, if, if this guy was listening, I would want him to know. And, and, and I, I, the point of the story is there's no way this guy's listening, but the, the, I would also I would want to know you did nothing wrong. You don't have to. You, you could erase this from your head. It is not on your karma. There's nothing. So you were at a bar, <laughs> and somebody came up to you and started talking to you. Yeah, I'm just trying to okay, find. Okay, so the, that uh, was the setup. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what to type so that I can find it. I'm never gonna find it. Are you? Are you? No. Shrab, do you have any advice uh, uh, for okay, people okay. who uh, come up to celebrities? Do I have any advice? Uh, no. While Dan really. searches. Not, not really. I mean, I think we just told the we told the Ducupney story last time, right? Yeah, okay, we right. we told that story. I, I mean, I My think favorite. we were th we were having we were having a pretty good time. That was a pretty historical night for me, at least. Yeah. You met Red Buttons, Tony. Oh Curtis. no, you're, you're thinking of Hasselhoff. That's the Hasselhoff story. We've also told that a couple times. Yeah. What? what so what, what's the, the finish Ducovny, to the, this story? The, the, the oh, the Duchovny story. story? Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We told yeah. that here. What, yeah, we told yeah, it here. Yeah. What, like, what, yeah. Okay. What, what about the finish to this story? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> you're not getting out of this. You're not uh, getting out of this one. All right. So I'm 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 going from memory because there's like in my mind it's like a it's like a flow chart where every time this guy has a chance to like go left but he he drills down uh okay so i'm i'm sitting at this uh billiard hall in burbank where i write most of rick and morty and uh i like there's this it's a so for so sometime inexplicably in burbank there's this like i don't know if it's like billiard leagues or something it's like the place is packed and i'm like typing and then as a, a guy comes up and i i see him peripherally and he's kind of like He's 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 bobbing and weaving and he's like captivated. Uh, and then he uh, he walks away for a second. He comes back and he goes, "Excuse me, has anybody ever told you you look exactly like Justin Roiland?" Um, <laughs> and and, and I, 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 I I think I think I've I think I've gotten that one before, like like as a as a bit. Now 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 zoom in on my flowchart where you go, okay, like this could be this could be a great guy, right? Yeah. That could be a funny bit, right? Of yeah, course, of course. Um, it's brave. It, 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 it actually didn't even occur to me that, that it, did, it did not occur to me. I I assumed automatically. I was like I was like okay, what he means is. Uh, big fan of uh, your uh your who you are and not that i would mind if he oh, deigned to not recognize me because he's someone else that would be fine too but it didn't occur to me i just assume i processed it like he's doing a bit yeah. he doesn't he doesn't want to he doesn't want to be regular right he wants to do he wants to be he wants to be fun and and i could just laugh at that i can go ha 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 <laughs> 
And, 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 uh, and I go, yeah, I, I, I get that a lot. So that's me yes anding uh, him. I get that a lot. And then, and then, and then he goes, whoa, whoa, uh, uh, wait, God damn it. See, the thing is, I needed my fucking notes because it's like he did so many things wrong, so many things. And they were all like one after Let's another. Just go for the first one. Oh, I, but I can't. If, if I skip, if I, I could skip too easily because okay. he just, oh, I mean, I should, I should bail on the whole thing. <sighs> can, we, can we just try one more time? All right. Well, I just, just because like, here's the like, great like, part. Let me let me think about it. Just like don't don't. Let, Shrop, just, give us know, advice. Help me with my phobia of uncomfortable pauses. We and got podcasting you. And Shrop, stuff. Let me think advice. About um, and take off your shirt. Ha ha ha! No, <laughs> cold. Um, okay. Okay. And, but, okay. Yes, he's a genius. Shrop is a right. genius. That's good. That's good. Okay, so he said, you just arrived, and, 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 I, and I said, yeah, I get that a lot, which had just occurred to me, and now I remember, like, well, yes, that's yes ending the joke, but it's also, if uh, it's technically, in a technical narrative, it's saying, I'm not who you think I am. Yes. So he reacted as if uh, uh, that were the case, and, and just went like, okay, and walked away. But he, like, did, like, a two-foot lap like around like an invisible sunflower that he was pollinating that was just like his own self-loathing or something or like the ghost of his dad i don't know and then like and then he came back and he like he, he was like no nah, no nah, it is you it's you i dude i'd know you anywhere and i was like yeah right, yeah yeah hey how you doing and, he, and he's like dude justin what are you doing here Oh shit! <laughs> and 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 I, and I was like, I, I'm, you know, I, I I'm, 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 I work here. I work, I work around the block. And and he and he goes, he he goes, he goes. Well, I don't know that. I'm not some sycophantic fucking ass kiss fan. I don't, I don't like worship your fucking life and know every goddamn detail of it. And I was like, that's cool. You don't have to. Did you? But it is Los Angeles. <laughs> And I, I, what am I, what am I doing here? <laughs> I, I thought you would, I thought you would shake him down in Justin's voice. <laughs> no, no, because he doesn't know. Anyways, but, um, but, but, but. Why but, didn't and, you just say I'm not Justin? You're wrong about that I, shit too, that's bitch. that's fucking, no, no, that's not fair. You don't, you don't have to say, no, I beg your pardon. I am not, because, because I, I also, I didn't. But he shit on you. Right, that, Once he shit on you, can't you be like, motherfucker, you don't even know who you're talking to. No, because, well, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm going to be right about this. You're going to see. Because, <laughs> because, yeah, he shit on me. I'm thinking, what I'm thinking at this point is, he, he's, he's going to be embarrassed at some point and I could keep him from embarrassment. You know, it's like the, like a parsley in your teeth, but it's like if someone with parsley in their teeth was like biting you, <laughs> like he's, he's, he's already being a bad person. So I was like, well, good. I can't wait for you to get the selfie tag it uh... Uh, and, and feel like a terrible piece of shit. Just enough. Like it's fine. And then every, all justice is done. And, uh, and then, and so he, there were some other things he, God damn it. I swear they were like 90 fucking things. And I was like, really that decision, that choice, that's amazing. Like, like, like you, you, you like, like the flow chart just has these clear, like the, you know, like the thing goes, this is like two of them, you know, one yeah. that like takes you, you actually kept it going after he was being aggressive. I didn't keep shit going. I, I'm a dude sitting at a bar. Did you shut it down? Did you, shut, I mean, how do you shut something down? You, that, I that's you being I, like. I kind of respect that you were like in for the bit so you could fuck him up with this selfie. That is some game master type I, shit. I, I will always yes and you. I'm never going to be like, excuse me, I'm eating. <laughs> like, like I, 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 if I, if the, that means like my mom died or like you have a hockey mask on, I don't know. Like, like I, I'm never going to be like, I don't consider that fair to like turn me into the, you know, like to put that on me that I have to become the person that, that, that radiates negativity because you decided to pee in the pool. You know, like I'm just like, <laughs> best I can do is be like, I'm swimming in pee now. So, so I love it. So after he was like going, I'm not some kind of sick of fan. Blah, 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 you went, you just went, okay. I was like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's what you would do too. It's you, you know, and you and I are not good people. We're passive aggressive. We're from Wisconsin. We're like, you know, I've seen you interact with a million terrible people, and you always do the exact same thing. The shittier they get, the more you're like, okay, yeah, all right. 
Yeah, and then you'll throw in something like, like if they're giving you a note on your comic book, you'll go like, okay, yeah, well, I'm probably gonna keep doing whatever the fuck I wanted to do. <laughs> but it was nice talking to you, you know, like that's, but I don't have anything to say in this situation because he's not telling me how to do the voices better or okay. something. So, so. Keep doing whatever the fuck you want to do. What? Oh, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. I get it. Game recognized game! <laughs> <laughs> to Dan? All right, what is that? What is, what is that? Is that a candle? This is a hot signature. <laughs> yeah. That's a hot signature I have. All right. Let me just let me just like teleport to the end and we'll bring our guest out. We it's to, a we hot can, we can, signature. Uh I I I the guy, the thing Riding that blew my candle. mind is he goes like, Hey, let me get a like can I get a selfie with you? And I was like, Yeah, no problem. And I, I took the selfie it, with him. Then it's not a selfie. I guess it is. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be doing it. And then and then he and then he and then he walked away and my Mike Mike Waldron and I were sitting there, we we're working on Rick and Morty, and I was like and we he was marveling at the whole thing and we were comparing notes and, and, and it was like he was like, Well, how often? And I was like, Not not like that, no. And uh and, and, and he's like, So he's gonna I was like, he's gonna go post it, tag it, and if I know if I know our fan base, like he's gonna know in five seconds that he should kill himself and die by fire and all this stuff. Um, what happened? But the, but the crazy thing is that the guy, the guy absolutely like it was a selfie on the way out. Like he was there for stuff, and then he was like, "One last thing, can I get a picture?" That was the thing. Like he waited till the end because why wouldn't you? And then he, and then he, and then he, and so then he left. And it was like we really thought. I was like, I was like, and so that the epilogue of that story will be forever unseen. And uh, and then and then and then, but then five minutes later he came back, and he was like, "Dude, Dan, I just wanted to uh, congratulate you on out trolling me on that joke I was doing." where I pretended to think you were Justin and you fucking just stuck it out. And, uh, that I didn't think you'd do that, but that was, uh, you know, congratulations. That was amazing, you know, but whatever. I knew who you were the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Well, guess what? Amateur hour <laughs> <laughs> you're like, fucking with a real comedian and you're walking up with your whack ass basement bargain joke. It was cute until you got aggressive. But now that you've met the real Dan Harmon and fucked up in front of him, I leave. <laughs> but, you know, you know, he could have just come over and say, can I buy you a drink, motherfucker? <laughs> But you know he wasn't. He wasn't, and because I, I ran through this a thousand times, like, like he he don't he was he was he was pre, he was revising. He came back, yeah, to salvage completely needless like salvage. Like, it's like you didn't have anything to salvage ever. Like 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 what do you you you're like that? And he that, did. That was the he mind did. blower. But in whose <laughs> eyes it was like, oh, remember that guy? Hey, remember me like this? Like I'm not gonna remember. I'm gonna get. I'm not even gonna remember the details of the story while I'm shit talking you. <laughs> Uh, damn, dude, I'm blowing up. Uh, oh, shit, it's him. <laughs> Heard you in real time, Justin. Didn't like what you said. <laughs> anyway, it was a, it was a, it was a bad. It was. A, I will forever regret this because uh, I, 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 I was, I was like, I knew it. It's been like three weeks. And I was like, oh, you never told that story. I would have had like some. I would have, I would have had the whole thing in my head. It was, it's bad podcasting, but that's why you're here. Uh, <laughs> I mean, otherwise you're just you're 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 uh, you're you're experimenting. I guess you're walking around downtown and you're like, let's go to a podcast we don't know is bad yet. <laughs> let's see if it's bad. If th those people I feel bad for, the rest of you, you're getting what you paid for. You know that. Um, but uh, sometimes we also have guests come on. Uh, 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 this one is no exception. <laughs> <laughs> it just gets better and better, really. Really? That was a fun, like, yeah. kind of alt comedy in intro. Yeah. Uh, I, I wrote a new dry alt comedy kind of like way of introducing people. Uh, 
Um, uh, I, I, ju- I just, I, I, th- this is one of those, one of those, one of those, one of those shows that I've been hearing about forever. That's always like, you should watch this. It's really funny. I could see from the ads. It probably was never did just dove into it. I yeah. fully admittedly, because he was coming to the, to the show. I'm so impressed with his stuff. Can't wait to talk to him about it and other stuff. Cause there's a lot of stuff he's able to talk about and he ruins it all. Please welcome Adam Conover from Adam ruins everything. <laughs> Yeah, anywhere you want, I think. Hi, everybody. Oh, so nice to be here. What do they call? What do they call a person that is it a polydact? Is that a word? Uh, would, yeah. Would that, uh, would that be a like a person who's got uh, more than one hand? Oh no, I think it's a person who knows more than one thing. Is that is that will that be polydact? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Polymath. Polymath. Oh, I no. think it might be polymath. Um, anyways, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I watched, uh, thank like, you. This has been great. I watched like five episodes of your show today. Thank uh, you, man. Pop, pop, popped around multiple seasons and stuff. I was really, really, uh, in, impressed now, but, and, and we'll get the, the plug in out of the way is that it's a, it may be an ill-timed plug, but like there's stuff coming up in July. Was that it? Or? Yeah. Yeah. We've got new episodes. Uh, we got new episodes up in July. Uh, we are on Netflix now, which is very exciting. And we also have new episodes coming out at the end of March on Netflix. They're not new, but they're new to Netflix. So, but it's weird because people who just have Netflix are like behind everybody else, but they don't even know that there's more episodes of the show to watch. It's a very strange state of affairs. Yeah. That's anyway. cool because, uh, yeah, and, and, and that that satisfaction of, of when that Netflix seal opens and you know you're gonna get like point <laughs> zero three cents of <laughs> more. Is that what happens? We well, have not know. we have not gotten a or, or like a residuals round on it yet. So I don't know how that affects. I don't that think Netflix thing. doesn't do back end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you didn't get any money the day Netflix uh, nope. came into your life, then you're never gonna see any. No, nope. it means they just they just came in your window and took your dresser. It's they're a like, weird. <laughs> they're like, what well, you wanted people to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. The, the 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 state of affairs of being like a modern creative person is like just hoping that a platform bestows its unearned like sea of eyeballs on you in like a windfall, <laughs> and then hoping to God it doesn't go away for no reason later that you don't get <laughs> fucked by some algorithm tweak that they made to try to stop anti vaxxers or something. Suddenly, no one's watching you now. It's uh, bizarre. What's the what's the viewership like on True TV? What kind of world are you mired in? Are they are they are are they, are, 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 they <laughs> are you mired or are you more in a quagma? In a, are you? Uh, I just mean yeah. like, do you get emails that are like, well, point seven last night, not as good as we hoped, but is it still that world in basic cable or? Yeah, I mean, it's I, I don't know the you know I sort of don't find out the week to week you know I, I get told hey the premiere was good and then I get told later on you know oh we did uh you know you did okay or it was flat or flat or whatever but I mean the numbers are crazy like we heard last year that like oh well you know uh we you know the the numbers were uh the, the it was flat your ratings didn't go up from year two to year three, right? And I was like, oh, that's a little disappointing. And then I found out later that the ratings for all of cable television had dropped 10% in one year. So if we were flat, we went up. Yeah. Like, we're we're beating everybody else. Well, it's like if I keep telling me people about my weight. I'm 46 years old. <laughs> <laughs> if exactly I get a little bit like. fatter, that means I'm, like, fucking, like, <laughs> ripped. Like, yeah. I'm, like, I'm, like actively not acroiding like, like, like i'm not exploding into it anyways it's exactly but, what it's but that like. was the same as like like when i was at nbc it was like but except the worst part was like they didn't that at least you could well you said you found out later but like it was it, it was years of venice sinking and being measured as sinking but everyone mm-hmm. just kept blaming the shows like yeah it was like how can you blame all of the shows for all shows failing in ratings yeah. like if it if the office is also failing <laughs> at, by the same amount you have to take that part off of yelling at me now now they're starting to, i i am totally with that and now they're they're starting to get it and uh, you i have conversations with tv executives more where they say like yeah you know we got to we got to get on some new platforms I mean, cable television just is not doing well. I'm like, <laughs> you're a cable executive. 
<laughs> Where are you going to go? No, it's good. <laughs> I just found out my company's buying an oil company uh, next week. Like, uh, pretty soon, yeah. we're going to be Time Warner Mobile. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to start, you know, Turner's starting a streaming service sometime, hopefully before uh, L.A. collapses into the ocean. And uh, I think that's their next big thing. But we're doing what I mean, look, we have True TV is a great audience. You know, uh, Impractical Jokers is on our network, and that's the best thing ever because Impractical Jokers, if you guys have seen the show, wonderful show, wonderful prank show. They run it like 23 and a half hours a day. <laughs> it's just, True TV is on demand Impractical Jokers. And it's one of the most popular shows on cable, right? And then people who are just sitting there watching Practical Jokers, and after a while, my show comes on, and they go, oh, what's this? Hey, I like that too. And so that's good for me. We always have the best lead-in on the network, no matter what happens. <laughs> <laughs> and your, yours, isn't, is, yours isn't constantly being run? Because that's another factor. Like, yeah, they do. They, they, we do pretty good on reruns too. They give us, you know, they'll do two-hour blocks throughout the year and stuff like that. And I'll say Adult Swim, they don't, they don't either, maybe this is privilege, maybe, because we're a gigantic hit. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I don't think it is because, I mean, we were I mean, I, I, Adult Swim never, they, I, I haven't heard a goddamn decimal number since I left NBC. Really? I, 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 Adult Swim's always Well, they're making very... their money a thousand ways. They've got it, you know, like, you're you're on lunchboxes. Yeah, they, Not they lunch also boxes, understand but... like, that they, they run their programming like yeah. just on this big round clock, a big round clock. Um, <laughs> Harmon explains television. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but the, and the, and the, and the, so how would you even be able to yell at anybody like oh it looks like you're taking a dip it's like what 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 dip like maybe maybe yeah. maybe you've ac accidentally adequately captured the appeal of the show maybe 80 people want to watch it at 9 a.m. yeah and then another 10 <laughs> people want to watch it an hour later um but anyways but uh i i i just well the, the, so that that's that's us ruining television maybe ruining sure. basic cable but um i'm very happy to be surviving in the it's so it's there's it the, everything is exploding right now in a million ways and everything's being disrupted so it's i'm very happy to just be surviving at all it's a great it's a television. great show Thank i just that, that's the that's the that's the important news is that creatively and I, I biggest compliment uh i i have is that i was so i had so much shit to do today i i i, <laughs> I i'm in, i'm in big trouble i'm like i'm like really really behind on a draft and i wasn't using you to procrastinate because i really did want to finish my <laughs> fucking draft but i knew i had to watch at least an episode of your show thank and you I, and i and i did and then i watched five and, and i i only i had to peel myself away it was re i really thank you like it i i i, I <sighs> let's figure out later if this was a good or a bad idea. How many people in the audience by applause have seen this show? Oh my gosh, that's pretty nice. I mean, I, I that's Could've a win-win. If there's anybody, if you're focusing on the negative space, that means potential. Yeah. That, that's now they're, now we're, now we're marketing. To and them. then, yeah, those other people are like, well, what are the clapping people? No, I don't know. Um, I want to be a clapping person. One, one, one reason why maybe people, I, I, to, to use my I statements, like I think a reason I didn't, I didn't flock to it is I, I live in fear of my own cynicism and stuff. Mm. I struggle so hard to stay positive and yeah. believe in humanity and stuff. And uh, I remember, I think the dark kind of club-footed cousin of your show is Penn and Teller's bullshit on Showtime. Yeah, I, I, I have a, I love that show when it came out, and, uh, but there were certain things that that, there are certain things tonally that that show did that I knew that I wanted to do something a little bit different from. Um, but I love, I'm a huge fan of Penn and Teller. Um, and, uh, and what those guys do, their show in Vegas is incredible if you've, if you've never seen it. Um, uh, There's a little Mythbusters in there as well. In, oh, and Mythbusters in terms of influence on, on our show? Uh, a little bit, except we're not, do, we never do experiments and right. things like that. I'm like not handy at all, you know? Um, like there's no like live demos um but uh yeah a little bit you know but i do think i think the, the the incredible exception that made a difference which is immediately apparent from the pilot and then it's there in every show i mean one of the things is that tonally there is just a clear difference in that it's like comedy versus tragedy kind mm -hmm. of thing like it's like at the end of the day, either your show believes the viewer should kill themselves or not. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and, um, and, and your show, like it has this, it, it, it has this heart to it. In fact, yeah. it's inviting people up to skepticism and yeah. cynicism. It's not implying that uh, if you didn't already know this, you, it's because you're dumb. And, <laughs> um, and, and also like, 
um, now that you know this, you know that life means less. Uh, yeah, no, it's the opposite. I, it, I mean, the the mo- one of the mottos of the show is that my character has, and that I have personally, is it's always better to know that I don't believe that there's any you know, there's any virtue and ignorance whatsoever and that you're always better knowing the truth. And the reason is because that makes you more powerful and capable and, you know, more able in the world. Um, and so we wanted to make a show that that shows that. Um, but I'm not a negative or cynical person by nature. Um, and so it was important to us to have that positive thing at the end. Although I think it was actually, on the pilot, I think it was the best network note I've ever gotten where they were like, you need a, something positive at the end. Like the fourth, oh, we're, we're a four, we're a four act show. And they were like, the fourth act should be just an uplifting message of some kind, you know? Um, and that's the best on note paper. That sounds like the it's a prototypical, terrible studio. Yeah, uh, exactly. Like, like, Oh, come on. I got to find a positive spin every time. Right. Can they, can, 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 <laughs> can, the can, can, uh, uh, I, I, tried, I, I was going to try to riff the name of like a character. That's like a guy you love to hate. I, yeah. I, I was like, can Rick, can Rick from Rick and Marty, can he be good at his job? I yeah. Don't know. I like, yeah. Like, no, exactly. Like, can can sounds... he have a dog that he loves just to show us that, you know, yeah, it and, sounds and, too Pollyanna. But in this, Case, what what was the hardest uh, positive fourth act piece? Like, what was the hardest one you think you did that? Or are they all like, oh, it's actually there's always something positive on well, each there, one. Well, there's somewhere the ones that work the best are where there's a specific thing that people can do. Where it's like, now that you know this, instead of doing the bad thing that you were doing before, here's the good thing that you can do. You know, instead of like giving, you know, instead of buying Tom's shoes in our pilot, you can give money to people directly, and that's much better for them, right? Um, the hard ones are where it's like really diffuse, like what the solution is. Um, like our climate change episodes are the most uh, difficult yeah. ones, and we did this whole episode where about climate change um, that uh, was very important to me. We did it in uh, 2016 and the big takeaway at the end, and this was like literally me go that a lot of times I'm working through it myself, you know, um, like I, I was literally wrestling with what the fuck are we going to do about climate change? No one is making any progress. Um, how do I think about this? Because it seems really dire. And we talked to this, um, uh, climate uh, thinker and, and philosopher Dale Jamison who made the point that like look it's not when people talk about climate change and they say the end of the world is coming if we don't do this the world is going to end that's always false right um, you can always make a choice today to make a better tomorrow no matter how things no matter how bad things are going to get you're never off the hook right um, because there's no there's no such thing as the apocalypse right because there'll always be people who are living um, and he said the best reason to be positive is because of the Paris Agreement because every country came together and it just happened every country came together and uh. made this agreement and so we did an episode where we we talked about that. You know that that was the fourth act. Thank God for the Paris Agreement because this is the best <laughs> sign we've ever had. And then and then and then between shooting and airing was November 2016. Um, mm. And uh, we had to release a we released a little bumper at the end, which was like, okay, so the Paris Agreement is uh, <laughs> uh, we're kind of worried about it now, and um, you should like phone call somebody, call get one of those apps that. Um, <laughs> And call it Congressperson Fuck, you know. Um, you got but, a little bobcat there. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh, Bob- fuck. <laughs> ah, shit. Yeah, I, be- <laughs> I become Bobcat Goldthwait in my darker really moments. Here's a Snickers bar right now. <laughs> yeah. um, the, uh, the, what, the episode that really, uh, I, 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 the five I watched, but I, I saw, obviously, when the title of the episode is different, I'm like, okay, I'm zooming in on that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, there's this character Emily in the show who's your oft antagonist slash yeah. whatever. Played you're, by Emily. You're Hansford. ruining everything for her, and she she wrote with you on the original College Humor mm-hmm. series. You said, yeah, yeah, um, and uh, plays herself. Uh, you know, her, her name's Emily. She's not playing herself. Uh, <laughs> she, <laughs> she's playing a. Ver- it's it's a based on her loosely, yeah. But that she's, um, uh, you know, she she gets these episodes where she gets to ruin. Yeah. You. Yeah. And um, which is a combination of a corrections uh, segment. Yeah. Uh, which your character is excited about, which I was really impressed by. I thought this was Thank such you. great meta storytelling. Like I, I love I'm really impressed with the amount of character that you're doing in a show that's just like a true TV. Like, hey, it's me. <laughs> this is my name. And here's the thing I'm going to ruin. It's like right. you have arcs. And and each episode has a story to it. It ha- like there there's and, and and this is so cathartic for someone to finally because nobody points out this part of the show to me. Very rarely does someone say, "Oh, I like the story arcs," you know. And we put so much 
work into that part of the show. I so. truly believe that that everyone notices it, enjoys it, but they don't in the back uh, of like, their minds. Yeah, because they're uh, they're inferior non elites. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> they don't have our galaxy Hollywood brands. They haven't earned the, <laughs> the conscious pleasure. Uh, but they're allowed the unconscious. <laughs> they feel it deep down in their animal brain stems. It's the, it's the scars on my back that are shaped like Joseph Campbell circles. <laughs> that, the, the, the wounds that, that allow his work to seep in on every level. <laughs> For you, you'll think, oh, I like this show. <laughs> I know why. <laughs> um, but uh, it really, I truly, it, re it really, I, 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 here's the thing. Like, I, it, for a nonfiction show to like, I'm like, it was like, it was a little, it reminded me of Doctor Who. Kind of like, like, like. Mm -hmm. It yeah. was, it, it, there, there, because there's now a consistency to your character and you have a companion yeah. and, sh and she was like it's my turn to fuck with you which is like first of all here's all the shit that people have uh, corrected us on that we did in the past and if, and you, but here's the really impressive thing to me as a master storyteller <laughs> In the first act of that story, Adam is like, oh, goody, I love being ruined because it's like the Adams family, right? Like, like, hey, what if you ruined a ruiner? Well, the ruiner would love it. He loves ruination. Oh, no, good, more ruining. <laughs> and, and I was like, well, it's probably going to just be the thing, right? She's going to get increasingly frustrated. But then there's this threshold that's crossed where... Yeah. Sh they they get they get through the corrections and they start talking about this thing called the backfire effect, which is a thing you may have heard about probably since the election, um, uh, or maybe have, I mean maybe not not by that name, but this idea that um, uh, when we uh, when we're when we're emotionally connected to something that we believe, um, uh, unlike with something else, like if I said, "What's that you're eating?" and you go. Slim Jims, and I go, you know what's better is Slim Jims Ultra. If you don't care, you're probably going to be like, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll try those. Yeah, yeah. Um, you love those conversations. Like, what are you listening to? The Pixies. The, you should listen to the Pogues. Okay. Uh, do they both have pee in them? Okay. Um, I wish we had used these act outs on the show. These would have been a great demonstration. <laughs> but I wish the backfire effect happens when you tell somebody, as the obvious example is, who'd you vote for? Oh, uh, Nat yeah. Natalie uh, Portman. Well, she rapes children children um you should and she pollutes the rivers and um you didn't know that and so you should vote for bernie uh, uh i'm trying to change the name so that we don't <laughs> but so you're gonna change uh, bernie sanderson natalie, Port <laughs> <laughs> natalie portman and bernie sanderson <laughs> i'm not good at names <laughs> everybody in your shows are is just named who they I were named trying to imagine someone's like no queen she was good as queen amadala <laughs> Is that her? Okay, thank God. <laughs> um, but they, they, it actually, not only is there a deflector shield, yeah. it actually studies have shown that if you just lob a kind of like, you're wrong about everything, the earth is actually round, at a flat earther, if, or, if they're a flat earther that has linked their fucking yeah. sexuality or their, their heart to flat well, earth, which how else would you be a flat and, earther? And it can be even more powerful than that. My favorite example that I've ever heard is like, imagine Sean Hannity, right? If Sean Hannity woke up tomorrow and read a study that convinced him climate change was real and we had to do everything to stop it now, right? His whole life is based around the opposite. Right. He, his career is, his family, rela his relationships to his friends are, you know? If he was like, no, no, I think climate change is real, he'd become a pariah among everybody he knew. It's not just his emotional idea, Identity. It's his social identity. It's right. everything he is as a person. So there's no way for him right, to do anything. Right, your money. Yeah, forget yeah. heart and, and soul and testicles. Like your your it could be your wallet. It could yeah. be your social standing. It could be your anything. If it, if there's an investment there, it, the 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 invasion of of an alternative fact can actually make you just double down. It's, yes. it's almost like your muscle your muscles tense up and and uh it, this, that, that, the the so not only was this an incredible episode just to learn about this stuff in a digestible way but also that I'm wa watching it as master storyteller um your <laughs> character in the show that's the threshold he crosses where he's like yeah. I don't want to hear about this yeah. <laughs> because yeah. it implies that your show doesn't have any value 
tell you. <laughs> Which is what my identity, both the character's identity and my own personal identity is wrapped up in the premise the idea that, that the Adam show ruining does everything doesn't yeah. mean anything. Yeah. It, it may, is how you get Doctor Who to like g- yeah. question himself. Yeah. And, and I love that so much. Thank and the, you. it all happens just within one boxing ring with Emily just dressed and she's just punching you in the face, telling you. <laughs> yeah. So it's not about like, uh, there didn't need to be a car chase in order for this to be like, like a dynamic story. I thought it was really cool. And I'm only learning this amazing thing, it, 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 which it, it uh, okay, Harmon, uh, land it. It, 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 use a period. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. Um, the, ba- the backfire effect though. So how do we, uh, oh, 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 the one, it was like, as it is explained in your show, the reason for the backfire effect, the software we're working with, or maybe we should call it the hardware. Yeah, the hardware. Mm -hmm. Um, the emotional wires, they run faster than the logical ones. Yeah. But you're never going to win. Like we may as well just accept that humans are passionate, illogical. Well, and and if we do that, then it, that gives us the tools that we need to overcome the backfire effect, right? Like my favorite thing, uh, about the, uh, segment was, you know, we went, uh, there, this guy uh, who we interview on the show, Stephen Lewandowski, um, and his uh, partners in academia wrote a, like a debunker's handbook, um, and you know that explains here's how to debunk things better. Um, and it's a lot of stuff we already do on the show. And the the thing that sticks with me the most is. It's about the power of stories, right? Um, that uh, people so often, when they believe something that's wrong, they have a story about it. Like here's, uh, and you know, you just uh, like any fact that you know, you probably have a story for how things got that way, right? America is like this because George Washington chopped down the thing, and the person wrote the thing, and whatever, right? Um, and so, if you can replace the bad story, the incorrect story, with a story that is both truer and more interesting, right? Right. That's how you uh, can convince them. And when he told me that, I was like, oh. Oh, that's the that's our fucking show. That's like all we do. Black History, Rosa Parks. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> okay. I, uh, let's let's do it. I'm, I ju- I'm I ju- ready. I ju- I ju- I'm white and I'm ready to talk about it. <laughs> Happy February, Brandon. <laughs> um, the, Can we uh, give you like a list? <laughs> Can we give you like a list of things to, to that you could ruin right here tonight? Well, like, let's, uh, let's, uh, like do, call out I, some I, stuff. Don't, <laughs> If, if we do that now, then I'll Cactus. be the guy that just pointed at people, snapped, and said "Black History, Rosa Parks," and then we moved on. I, 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 <laughs> I have to just explain that yeah. I, I, I've been I've been doing like an hour of reading in the mornings before my Instagram workouts. Now I have more to explain, but I won't. Um, but this uh, is I'm proud of you. But that I I, I, I initially here's the here's the path that I went through. I'm going to be a hipster, uh, artisanal black historian for my workout. So why would I do anything that we learned about in high school? So let's skip Rosa Parks. Then I think, first of all, what, that probably takes a lot of work. How do you skip Rosa Parks? Probably by being smarter and spending more time. So let's do Rosa Parks. Yeah. Then I, I'm, but then, so then like, oh, I guess what the first step is going back to like sixth grade where you, you, you have this George Washington cherry tree story, right? Yeah. Rosa Parks was an old black lady who was on a bus and she had a lot of bags and she was very tired and and the climate of 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 racial injustice was was just like uh uh, uh bubbling in a and a bruin and this innocent perfectly uh unaffiliated like woman who just it was represented all of america because she didn't want nothing to do with none of this <laughs> um she was just tired and she wanted to sit down and from that sparked a revolution because and, and it's like now yeah. i'm realizing like that was the sinister that george washington cherry tree tree story is propaganda about hey you you don't have to be an activist. You should just <laughs> sit down and shut the fuck up if you want to cause change. Like, just do what makes you... Do well, but the truth is, she was 40. She was... So later when you're 20, you learn... You you, you hear these, like, whispers of these... The, like, hey, you know that Rosa Parks thing? It's all bullshit. It was orchestrated. <laughs> there were a million Rosa Parks before Rosa Parks. A million people <laughs> sat on buses that where they weren't supposed to. Yeah. And she and she was a... She worked for the NAACP. What do you think about that? <laughs> and, and it's like, I got... I got whispers of that. I remember at some point I was like, oh boy, I, you know. Uh, yeah. Then you then you just read her fucking Wikipedia page. Yeah. Which is not the truth, probably. It's no, Wikipedia. Wh- wh- but the truth is it's an amazing story. Yes. Yes, Shout she worked for the NAACP. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Claudette Colvin. Yeah, Claudette Don't Colvin. Don't high us. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Claudette Colvin was the... It must be the 29th of February. <laughs> Claudette Colvin was the uh, the original Rosa Parks. Yeah, she's fifteen years old. Yeah, and uh, she but she was pregnant 
So, and she's a little darker skinned. So they were like, we got this Rosa Parks in the wings to sort of fully illustrate your point. There was a pregnant, yes, there was a, yes. And she would not have withstood. Now, this is also a thing. It's like, do you want to put that kind of pressure on a, on a, on a young woman that is going to, Yeah, the, you have to go all the way up to the Supreme Court. Everyone is going to attack you for the rest of your life. Rosa Parks died. Uh, she, she was like, she was attacked for the rest of her life. She lost her job as a seamstress. Her husband lost his job because he wasn't allowed to talk about his famous wife at work. They had to change states. She died alone in an apartment that was robbed like 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 she was robbed but then she was moved to a higher uh income apartment beautiful beautiful apartments owned by the pizza pizza people the <laughs> well, the, we, we little, won't name them because we have a you'll hear the ads for domino so we we, we have to call little caesars the pizza pizza people <laughs> pizza people <laughs> Uh, well, because what happened was she did get robbed. People had sort of forgotten about her. She was in Detroit. And then uh, love, lovingly, the community stepped in and said, you can't rob her anymore. And then she was living in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's Rosa Parks. Don't rob her. Strangely, they broke into her house. They took all of her chairs. Uh, <laughs> uh, come on. Wait, really? Come on. Come so on. she could never <laughs> sit down. Wait, is here. that true? Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> she it's can't awful. even sit in her own apartment. It's awful. Black History Month. Now you know the fucking truth. <laughs> they stole their uh, Anyways, give my me point, a break. I just got excited because when you said that George yeah. Washington thing, I was like, I just experienced that exact same thing. Is my only point. Well, this gets to your point about about cynicism, right? Because th this is what our show. This is why our show is not a cynical show. Because you hear those that cynical version, like, oh yeah, Rosa Parks. She wasn't the first one. There's this other girl, Claudette Colvin, who sh they fucked her over because they yeah. she was pregnant. The first and, whispers are like, if you uh, knew as much as we knew, you'd hate life and you'd hate yeah. everyone, and, and you'd, you'd hate Rosa Parks. But no, it's the the fact is the true story. I believe is always a better story. Um, and the true story is that she was an activist and they were and they were thinking strategically. And so, yeah, they were like, hey, Claudette Colvin, this happened to her. Uh, you know what? I bet we can find someone who will play better in the press. It was purely yeah. strategic. Also, and Claudette was sort of a bitch. She was really rude and she would not do press. <laughs> she was like, I don't like sitting down on nothing. <laughs> so they were like, we got to swap yeah. somebody in. <laughs> But like that that goes to show you <laughs> that goes to show you how smart and committed those activists were the NCAA yeah. the NAACP was at that time and uh and how good a job they did and the story about her being the little old lady was you know more or less created by that movement because it's a good story you know like it's it's not it's not an evil story it's like it's helpful to the it's, movement it's it's yeah it's putting a different face on what is a yeah the yeah uh, and that's and that's press and that's politics and that and, and you know there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that but you have a for, you have a for, you have a fuller understanding of what the movement actually accomplished if you understood, no, these were activists who were trying to accomplish something and they went about it in a very smart way and you can too, right? And so then when you look at those kids like, I don't know, the kids who like went to Diane Feinstein this week and like went to her office and like, look how smart that is, you know, to like, hey, we're children, we're literal children saying, hello, we would like the planet to be around it, when we, we're here, you know? And, we are and, a, and uh, Diane Feinstein was like, we, uh, <laughs> well, then let me drink your blood. We are, <laughs> we are, a, we are a pack who has pushed these children into a senator's office, the children can't tell you what school they're from because they're not supposed to be part of, they're not political pawns. Mm -hmm. But there is a group called the Sunrise Organization yeah. that hires a bunch of people to uh, pound their way into Democratic senator's offices. It's the same move that they did to Pelosi. It's not a bunch of kids, it's not random. It's, a, it's an orchestrated event where people have cameras where they set up old <laughs> female Democrats. That is not <laughs> a cool tactic at all. Oh, well, interesting, interesting. They didn't go to uh, Republicans' Brandon offices. Always, always, always slightly oh, well, lateral. No, those, those kids went to Mitch McConnell's office how today. Did, they, how they long were did Mitch they McConnell's up. Oh, I don't know. I, I, right. I couldn't tell you the details. <laughs> Look, well, we, That's we how you know it's a scam. <laughs> is that we didn't send... First of all, we don't use kids as pawns. That, that's number one. Number two, they don't, they don't, send, them, they don't send them into an, an, a candidate who doesn't have a green plan. She had a green plan right for them. And when they did the same thing to Pelosi, Pelosi handed them a plan. Why weren't those kids given that plan before they walked in? Why weren't those kids hooked up with the knowledge they needed? And how come those adults allowed those kids to yell at an older senator? That shit's bullshit. California is the greenest state in the nation. Take your ass to the Kentucky senator's office. Go to Philadelphia. Go to, go to Pennsylvania's office. Don't, don't just fuck with the female candidates, the female senators. Damn. These are, these Brandon, are, these, these also, are don't make a two-minute Don't make a two-minute edited tape. 
You lost me when you posted a two minute edited tape. The whole tape has her receiving those kids with love. Uh, this brings up something I did. I, I was going to like lead with tonight, which was and, and not, not, uh, th- 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 which was just this fascinating fact that we've now, here we go. Here we go again, two years. Well, actually kind of three years later, I, it's, I remember distinctly the point where it was where the primary season was upon us. And, um, and I remember if you if you go back, I swear, if you rewind the podcast, you'll listen to me being absolutely silent about politics. And the reason is because it was the whole it was like Hillary people versus Elizabeth Warren people versus Bernie people versus things. And I was like, I, I through pure cowardice, not through nobility, because as you saw later, as soon as the election happened, I was like, what? This world's fucked. I got to say some shit. Um, but I was just sort of like. Uh, it's time for the groundhog to go back in his hole. And I, I, I mean, what is the, it, 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 it relates to the backfire effect. This mm-hmm. idea that we're, we're, we all know now we're watching this We're we, there's a shit storm coming. It's a shit storm that includes our best friends yelling at each other. Uh, it includes this podcast possibly getting inflammatory. If there's somebody out here that, 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 that says something, it's like, I remember I remember years ago, you know, I remember my friend Heath being up here and going like, well, what about Elizabeth Warren? And just like I remember other people that I respected and who I wanted to be happy, like fucking basically, how can I describe it other than bullying him? Like, 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 like shouting him down and like our this backfire effect means yeah. that like that's why the age old tradition of we don't talk about religion and politics, right? Because those are the mm-hmm. those are the those are the facts that we're all invested in which yeah. means that every time we hear something other than what we already thought we constrict right. i mean people are already uh, uh, attaching their identities to specific candidates and specific you know like platforms and like i don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing right um i think that is kind of how it works shit. yeah yeah, yeah it's all like 80 percent of the country doesn't right like, and, like they're not helping us and i think we i think we are kind of doing Actual, po- I think what it is is it's actual politics. Like that's actual, you know, political action. Is it's nice uh, that those shit conversations, now those arguments sounds more like people are to- using the words socialist, fascist, yeah. authoritarianism. It's like we're actually doing politics in this country for the first time. Real or at politics, least, yeah, yeah, for for the first time in like fifty years. Um, and so people got to like learn how to do it over again. Because I remember people, oh, don't talk about politics at a dinner party. I was like, why not? You just say I like the president the end you know <laughs> like there wasn't much or i don't like like it was i don't know it was kind of easy during the bush years too i don't like it all right moving on you know we got a couple years till the election and now there's like uh y- you know there's actual shit to be worked out yeah right i mean i didn't recognize them as politics because the morning after the election it was this thing that was making all the women cry it that that wasn't politics <laughs> to me which means i'm a misogynist and i was like yeah. waking up to that i'm like yeah why why is that waitress eyes so red <laughs> well because something horrible happened last <laughs> night that sent her a signal after like her entire yeah. life but etc cetera, etc cetera. and it'd be it, 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 and, and as i gained access to that it wasn't the political thing to me it was me realizing i was I was part of a problem without realizing it, et cetera, et cetera. So for Mm -hmm. me, it was like a journey of self-discovery. And then as uh, as my self-discovery is unfolding, I'm triggering people who are going like, Jesus fucking Christ, stop talking about politics, you fucking lump of fat, hairy shit with gross, (laughs) flappy tits, you disgusting soy boy, fucking virtue signaling, (laughs) cuck beta fucking pedophile fuck. How did they know you were a cuck? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know, it's, it's it would some... be cool if we didn't talk about behavior, <laughs> 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 and we just talked about policy. It'd be good if we got back to like, let's just talk policy. Yeah, I mean, on our show, like, you know, we do. I don't want to say our show is is not political because it is because we talk about issues that can only be resolved through politics. 
politics, as I'll define it half-assedly right now, being like the process of how we decide what we're going to do, you know, in a in a country of people who have differing beliefs, right? How do you create a consensus or create like a dominant majority for a particular issue, right? Um, but we talk about, you know, so we talk about like mass incarceration and and you know criminal justice and climate change and things like that. Um, uh, we don't talk about, you know, we rarely say the name of a political party or like use that sort of like angle that you're going to get on it from the daily show right um and part of that reason is we're trying to get to people in a more we're trying to hit people at their best and at their most thoughtful and their most open to new ideas um rather than activating that identity-based so part of them is there an operation board game it. aspect to the to the backfire effect yeah. where you can actually avoid let's call them trigger trigger phrases yeah a, li uh, a, a little bit um you, you know yeah we we will we will try to make arguments that we think um nobody could disagree with right like uh you know for the most part for instance when we're making an argument about uh about like that such and such a policy is like discriminatory you know everyone if you present to people the basic premise of like you know policy shouldn't be racially discriminatory right we can all agree that everyone should be treated the same by the government. Everyone will go, yes, I agree with that. And then we say, okay, here's a case that it's not happening. And then they'll go, okay, that probably shouldn't happen. You know, like they'll, if you engage with them that way, they'll, they'll all agree with that, if that premise. If you can start with it where, where it's like, this person is, you, you know, like this party is destroying America. People will get their, yeah. will get their back It almost up, right? seems like we're defining diplomacy. A little bit, yeah. Because yeah. Uh, it seems like 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 our our country was founded by a, a bunch of diplomats, people who were like really fond <laughs> and good at like talking yeah. around a topic. Yeah. Uh, uh, in in such high flown terms that how are you going to argue with this? Yeah. And that, and that maybe that's what good diplomacy is when mm -hmm. you like it, it, every time that that every issue tends to get like pulled down into factionalism mm -hmm. and they, they they love to attribute catchphrases to it and yeah. those catchphrases are often indistinguishable from perfectly logical words like up yeah. in this cloud but as soon as they're down there they're off the table and so you have to be like this weird person who speaks like they sound like a yeah. fucking thesaurus because what That's you're really what we doing do. is kind of like rising above everything and floating and going like, well, it's a uh, it, 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 it is this belief that a mankind that <laughs> should prosper should you know and it's like why 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 aren't they just talking about the Tories that we know what this is about <laughs> fucking Tories rule. And it's like, uh, and, and if they mention tomatoes because of that tomato riot, I, I know that's dog whistling. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, uh, we 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 try to avoid all that stuff. You know, we did an episode about about guns uh, for our season premiere this year, and we. Um, uh, in the past, like our first year, I was like, we'll never do an episode about guns because that's like one of the big fault lines of American society. Like as soon as you do that episode. Because how do you ruin guns? Yeah, well, the, oh, well that's a good question. Um, but, you know, as soon as we talk about it, people will be like, as soon as you say, okay, I'm going to do an episode about guns, everyone folds their arms and they say, well, you better say what I want you to say. <laughs> well, yeah, I or I'm going to change, here, yeah. I'm gonna change the channel. If you don't, I'm going to be watching you like a hawk. You better say my side right now, you know? And so after doing the show for a couple of years, I, I was like, I think we can do it. I think we can at least make an attempt to do it an episode that like gets people a little bit off balance um, and uh, hits the issue in a way that destabilizes them that hopefully they'll be a little more open minded to that you know we 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 try to hit things where like, everybody misunderstands this do about think guns. everybody's the, wrong about this do you think you know? when you ruined guns i didn't watch that episode do you think when you ruined guns that you um uh was there fixed it yes oh, no 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think we did uh, it. Was there a? Uh, did you kind of ruin it for everybody? Uh, that <laughs> was that was our that was our attempt. I mean, w w it was really interesting because we really wanted to do an episode that would speak to everybody. Speak to I hate saying both sides because I don't actually believe I'd, in the. I'd love for you to sides. ruin dichotomy. <laughs> yeah, just ruin, ruin fucking binary. Ruin the Hegelian dialectic. <laughs> um, the uh, I mean that that's what we're that is what we were trying to do you know because these these coalitions are based around these catchphrases and these buzzwords that have very narrow sort of cognitive troughs that they're like stuck in you know and so we were trying to get people out of that and say hey here's a couple basic things that we can agree on and then here's 
here's a couple things that everybody is getting wrong, right? Um, so for for instance, our our third act was was uh, entirely about how guns interact with race in America, which is something that, you know, is very rarely, people who are pro-gun control are very rarely having that conversation. People who are pro-gun rights are very rarely having that conversation. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, that was our, that was our approach. Um, and then we, yeah, I mean, I, it was very difficult to do that without, falling into both sidesism because that's the you know that's the shitty version of that hey there's a lot of shit to go around yeah. you know you're wrong you're wrong here i am in the middle like standing on top of my bullshit mountain right um but uh and i think we were if someone were to come up to me and tell me hey this was both sides bullshit i'd be like okay we did our best you know um like I, i'm not gonna argue with you but we tr tried not to do that very yeah. hard i mean that's a remarkable and chilling like description of the of the ice we're walking across <laughs> where, where it's like, there's a term now for both sides -ism. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah, like I wish there weren't sides and, uh, yeah, now the term both sides is absolutely <laughs> attributable to, well, let's call him new Hitler. I don't know what I, I don't know what to call him. Bad Hitler, dumb Hitler, but yeah, but, but literally like came <laughs> out of his mouth and it's like, you could yeah. never say both sides ever again. Yeah. Uh, uh, while taking yourself seriously as a uh, arbiter, yeah, you uh, because now and I, I've actually detected that with the I, I started to notice like I won't talk about freedom of speech anymore because the mm. truth is that millennials have heard enough, uh, have heard that phrase so many times, um, yeah, during um, arguments about why they shouldn't. Uh, complain about a or their your, yeah. rights, <laughs> their all their other rights. Yeah, why they shouldn't speak up in defense of themselves. That even yeah. though I feel like the day I die, it's it's either going to be prostate cancer, a heart attack, or I'm being shot specifically about First Amendment shit. Um, <laughs> That I won't, I won't talk about it anymore because I sound <laughs> racist when I say freedom of speech. Yeah, yeah. Um, because because the dialectic, the, the dialogue changes. Yeah. I don't know what's going on back there. Something happened back there. Uh, uh, blue, blue screen. Uh. <laughs> oh God! Oh no, Brandon's. A, oh. Um, <laughs> I mean, this segues into. Well, Rob wanted to. You wanted. To, you do. Do you have any Let's random keep... things you want to see if Adam can ruin? Because okay. he truly has ruined. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here sure. we go. Skateboards. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> I mean, uh, you can say pass. What, what is that? I mean, those. The, I've never seen anyone do a trick. <laughs> okay, they, it's the oldest <laughs> joke in the book, but they always fall off. They're always like, you see the guy do the flip, and then he's like, ah, oh, fuck, and he takes a couple stutter steps. That's the only thing I've ever seen anyone do on a skateboard. Awesome, apples. Apples, uh, yeah, okay. Um, apples are really interesting because uh, they. Uh, if you just like plant an apple seed in the ground, this is weird and true. You get like a random apple. Like something about apples mean they don't breed true. They like breed in crazy ways, you know? So you'll get like just a weird fucking probably inedible apple. Um, and as a result, people for most of the time, Johnny Appleseed, he wasn't planting apples to, uh, you know, eating. They were only usable for cider. So he was actually planting booze trees all over America. This is 100% true. Uh, it's in Michael Pollan's book, The Botany Desire. Um, and and as a result, what would happen is if you randomly got an edible apple, you'd be like, holy shit, I'm going to be a billionaire because then you would start grafting the tree and cloning it, right, off of your original uh, tree. And so it was sort of like a striking oil, like to find uh, an apple, like, oh, I, I uh, Granny Smith, I got it. Like, <laughs> you know, um, and uh, so most apples are uh, clones. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's uh, what I know about apples. Yeah. I, uh, Thank you. I mean, I'm just... I'm literally just repeating things from New Yorker articles. Yeah. Like that's all. That's all. Oh, no, that's from no, Michael that's Pollan's a, book, what The Botany of Desire. The show, though, is that you say in the pilot, you go. By the way, every time I say something, mm -hmm. there's a bug up in the corner of the screen. There's yeah. A, it, it cites the reference. I did that specifically because I was just a, a comedian, and I was like, "Why should anybody believe anything I say? I need to let them know it's in a book somewhere." Yeah. Well, why else would they believe it? I I'm, do, and I glance up there when you say something, and I go like, "God damn it, what?" And then I'll see like slate. 2011 I'll mm -hmm. go like well you know I I'm sure that person did their research you know what yeah. I mean like but it's it's a proper kind of like yes. I, it makes me feel more comfortable that's a big theme of your show too is the idea that peer review and the idea of yeah. being wrong mm -hmm. builds trust it's okay to be wrong be yeah. wrong admit you're wrong it's and the corrections page in a newspaper you know uh, or it, it's when someone is we try to be transparent about our process that, so that people like uh, uh, one of our, our head of research, Natalie Scher, has a great um, 
uh, phrase for this. Oh, I can't remember exactly what it was, but um, it's uh, not the idea that someone is perfect or that, you know, uh, oh, sorry, it's uh, credibility is more important than accuracy, right? Because um, you're not going to be 100% accurate, but what you can be is as credible as you can. And so you can say about someone, hey, they do their research, they uh, they approach these issues in a credible, you know, respectful, uh, you know, top of their intelligence way. When they're wrong, they fess up to it. Like this is a person who I can trust in a way, right? And so that's the that's the ideal that that we go that yeah. we go for. As All best you we have can. is your word. So always use. My therapist would say, always use your I statements. If you're talk, you know, if you're talking to somebody about emotional <laughs> yeah. issues, just always always make sure you're always talking about how you feel. Yes. That way, like, well, you know, you could be, you could be a crazy person, but yeah. you would be constantly, people could rely on you. Yes. You could be like, yeah, Dan's always, he's nuts, but I know he, exactly how he's nuts because he's always like, those windmills make me want to eat more <laughs> salt. And, and, and um, but yeah. Yeah, I, I, I am now very upset about my circumcision, by the way. I saw, <laughs> I, I saw the sex episode and I did not, I, I wasn't sure what to think about. Sir. I guess the one, the, but the one nice thing about it is that if I have a kid, I don't think. There we I'm, go. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have them circumcised. That's my favorite thing that uh, people will come up to me and say, and they'll they'll say, "I didn't." They'll say, "We didn't circumcise our kid because of you." And I say, "Yes! If you could change one life, if you <laughs> if you could change one uh, small child's penis in a positive way." If uh, now look, I I, I want to say that uh, circumcision. Our position is there's no particular reason to do it. Right, it's not a terrible thing to do, and if people do it for religious reasons, that that's fine or whatever. There's no medical reason to do it, and so if you're of the general position that I am, which is don't perform unnecessary surgeries unless you have a really good reason, then hey, wh why not not do it? You know, and like there's certain you know, uh, uh, yeah, that, 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 yeah, that's about it. But I don't, I don't want to. I, I went on really the business of shaming really anybody's into dick. The hygiene thing, but then I thought I was like, wait a minute, why would cavemen have a piece of their penis <laughs> that, if left untended, gives you an infection. That no, makes no sense. They roll the, around in dirt the for a living. The foreskin serves a the foreskin serves a purpose. It yeah. it it covers the penis, which is a sensitive area that can get dirty. It's got We're a purpose. All the time on Harmontown. <laughs> in that same That's episode, our last I mean, you, you could have broke these into three episodes, but yeah. in that same episode, herpes and hymens. Mm -hmm. I I, uh, I was <laughs> wrong like about all of them. <laughs> <laughs> the two H's. Herpes. Herpes. Ninety percent of people have some form of herpes. Have some form of herpes. Herpes is an extremely. Uh, so the problem with herpes is that people. The real scourge of herpes is that people get a herpes test and then they're told they have herpes and then they're like, oh no, I have a horrible STD and now I can't have sex with normal people. You know, I can't, I'm a pariah and they sort of feel, you know, like, but most people who have herpes, 90% of people have some form of herpes um, and then, you know, mouth herpes, like there's, that's talking all over the body, right? But like so many people who have herpes don't know that they have it. And that's fine because it never affects their lives at all. You is know? it because they don't get tested or is it because... It, it's because it's for most people, it's so asymptomatic, you wouldn't know that right. you had it. And so sometimes people... I've, I've talked to people who are like, I went to get an STD test and I told the doctor I wanted a herpes test too and they said don't get one because doctors know that you are you probably have it and finding out that you do have it is just going to make you put a social stigma on yourself so you're better off because it's a thing that like everybody everybody has now that's not, now you know there there are like extreme yeah everybody has it <laughs> see <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the jokes are too good to resist despite that <laughs> everybody um, has. Uh, but that yeah it's uh <laughs> it's shame i mean i love that 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 uh your your episode on sex we try to remove shame circ circumcision to hymen to herpes yeah and, and it comes around to the fourth act of what explains all this stuff? All the things that we're wrong about. It's shame. Yeah. Shame surrounding sexuality. Little boys are having their their, their dick tips cut off at mm -hmm. birth b based on at best. Now, we're not questioning anybody if you're if you're getting your dick tip cut off for a 5000 year old reason we're i'm not saying this podcast is not saying hey storm the gates i i i have no business there but um but truthfully if you if you're just uh 
it's it, it's questionable reasons. We don't. There's no science well, that yeah, suggests it, it, it was a fad in the 19th century that that they thought would stop kids from masturbating. Yeah, um, and that, which, that's why it took off in the United States, but not in most of the world. Right? It was. A I US do wonder what fad. my life would be like if I masturbated more. <laughs> and, and if that would be a bad thing but I, I uh, apparently this this procedure does not stop people from masturbating I gotta say it probably the main thing it's done is it's probably really increased lube sales in America because uh, the foreskin's a natural lubricant and uh, if you don't and have it I think you need more lube it's good because it's a mucous membrane I assume because you cited you said the tr if you're if you're gay um uh not being circumcised, uh, a person uh, uh, being circumcised will reduce the HIV uh, uh, risk, right? But, oh, but, but but not. But we're talking about so bareback versus condoms. Uh, uh, condoms reduce it by eighty percent. I, I <laughs> he points at me like T continue. Um, I uh, yeah. There's there's a small effect that's been shown that being circumcised can re can reduce the risk of. STD transmission in uh, certain cases by some percentage, right? But it's like some small percentage. It's like your chances of transmitting it are like 10% less or something like that, um, which is, to my mind, not a good reason to chop off part of your body if you can wear a condom, right? Or if you can practice safer sex, you don't need a surgical... Right, like nothing nothing beats a condom in the first place, which I, is the important thing. I read an article once that said if we were to, uh, if we were to circumcise a third of men on Earth, we could reduce the cases of uh, cervical cancer, which is caused by HPV, by a couple thousand per year, right? It's like, you're going to circumcise two billion people, like billions of people, in order to just give out condoms. You know, like, it's a better, that, that, that's a better, that's a better plan than, hey, we're going to go around with scalpels to, like, everywhere in in the world, right? Uh, that's my, uh, uh, that's my feeling about it, anyway. Yeah. Um, I just think about my dog. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they get they get that little lipstick comes out and then I, and I go like, well the reason that lipstick isn't always out is because they're not circumcised yeah 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 and like like so I'm like looking at imagine it like, if we circumcised like, dogs you, it was out all the time that'd yeah, be horrible like the dog would be so bummed out like I'd say, <laughs> yeah but again again it's like the the thing one well, the reason it's been able to persist is because it's not a particularly bad thing to be circumcised right um and so uh, it's like fine it's totally great um, and the reason the myth around hymens is persisting is because it, it blends perfectly in with our kind of like bullying of yeah. young girls or saying yes. like, oh, there's this event that's going to happen when you have sex for the first time. You should think about it more than the guy does because the guy could just stick it in and go away. Yeah. And uh, you, however, you're the recipient of this thing and we're trusting you with this like drum skin that's yep. going to like, and then, oh God, <laughs> boy, you better not. Yeah, you'll be and, changed and forever. It's, it's, yeah. it, 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 it's actually, it's practicality that, that perpetuates that myth. It's a little mm -hmm. more insidious than the circumstances. Oh, it's incredible! Yeah, it's incredibly insidious, and it's and it's simply not true. It just the the hymen does just the doesn't exist just that way. The hymen is just a thing. It's not has nothing to. You know, it's all. I got the impression it's unrelated to sex. <laughs> like that, it's just a fucking. You know, thing I don't want to get too outside of my lane, um, <laughs> uh, talking about it because you know we did that episode, episode a couple years ago. And we made our claims there, and you know I'm not an expert on on uh, uh, on female anatomy. I've never uh, seen a woman, um, but. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, the hymen is not a barrier that is covering the, you know, vagina. And then w the first time a dick comes through, yeah. it's like, you know, ruptured forever. Like that doesn't, that's literally what I pictured my entire life was I was like, it's like a freshness seal. It's like a fucking Capri Sun. <laughs> Boom, you go through there. You're never going to close that Capri Sun again. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought it was, and yeah, I had uh, sex ed in you class guys in characterize school. Characterize it as that paper thing on a football field that the band comes through. <laughs> yes, and, but I and I but I really love this. This goes back to how much heart the show has on that football field. This character of Emily, to, um, uh, 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 Adam is is standing with Emily's uh, boyfriend Murph, who's a health teacher. But you guys are 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 preoccupied with the. Uh, the myths surrounding the hymen because the first one on the list is the cherry popping daddies uh, <laughs> band, and the, and the two of you as men are just like looking at, at a CD case and like arguing about why it's bad, which leaves Emily to like walk away from you guys down the football field yes. in a beautiful haunting shot where she just basically says without preaching that like this is also by the way 
you can use this myth of the hymen. There are countries where women have to show proof of hymen to get a fucking yes. food stamp. Or they have to show that proof is. of something that doesn't exist in that form, right? It, that it, that doesn't even food it, stamp. It, I yeah. riffed. Don't don't. Uh, I just <laughs> say like like it's like if you yeah. if you accept something as clinical and cause and effect, it can be used to like really hurt people. It's yeah. Like, if it's a myth, it's crazy. It's like the same thing as IQ tests, which you also ruin, mm -hmm. which have been used extensively for racism. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so. Uh, uh, but that's that's just like like please watch the show. I mean, that's really <laughs> it's, you, it man. is not a show that wants you to be unhappy and wants the world to be a worse place. Yeah, I mean, our our I always say the ruins part of it is like it, it's a superficial joke. You know, it's like you ruin comfort. I mean, yeah. And, it, it, when you, know. you learn something that is contrary to what you believe, it's like uh, unless it's really a backfire effect situation, it's momentarily uncomfortable. You know, you're like, oh no, that's not. Ah, oh, fuck. Oh, my gears are grinding. Ah, oh, geez, right. And then, uh, but then as you learn and you start to embrace the actual truth, it's really fun and rewarding to learn a new thing. And it, because you know that it makes you more powerful, it opens the world up to you. One of the reasons our show does well is because once people learn the things, they want to go tell someone else right away. Right, like learning case in point, which is something I knew 20 years ago, but I assumed it changed. But then I saw your episode and I was like, wait, I always knew this. This explains everything. Uh, the uh, Your credit card numbers... They've already been stolen. <laughs> it, it, yes. The fact that it seems like every once in a while, like you're uh, vulnerable to identity theft, is 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 based on the statistical probability of the gigantic landfill full of everyone's credit card numbers that exists online. Yes, that are that are sold to uh, among people. Yeah, and and huge like, tranches of like billions of cards. You're yeah. actually protected by the lack of security about your credit card because it's like a school of fish. Like, yeah, it, it, it's like. What, what, well, uh, what are the odds you're going to get eaten? Very and the, low. And, and the credit card companies all, or the banks more specifically, all have, they're just like, okay, we'll just, since this is the case, we'll just cancel the card and refund the thing when it happens and we'll call you on the phone and, and you yeah. know, so that's why now it's more annoying, right? Because your your credit card, what people now have their cards canceled, you know, the fraud protection is too strong, right? Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, that's... It, but I always knew that because I remember being a kid and I remember, I don't know if I've, it's illegal for me to say this, but I remember being in that phase of my life, like 16, 17. And like, I remember going to those sites and going like, for real, this is, these are just people's credit card yeah. numbers. Yeah. And I would take some and I tried some and I, I got, I did some stuff. I, 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 Whoa. I, we're I, all I, the I, time I, on Harmon town for the <laughs> second time. <today. laughs> I thought maybe it had changed in 20 years, but yeah. it, as your, as your show maybe makes a point, it's like, no, in the seventies, they used to take your, your credit card is just a, literally a card that has the number on it. And they would literally just go one, seven, five, four. Yeah. And then the thing that changed over 20 years is that now a computer does that. Yeah, but it's it's no more secure. The only thing it eliminates yep. is like one person overhearing your credit yeah, card I mean, transaction. We, we, we've got like you know chip and pin when you're using the register is you're not exposing your number in the same way that you used to be. But the number system still exists, right? All you need is a ser you know a string of digits, a shorter string of digits, and a shorter string of digits, and you can use you can use someone's card, right? Now, exactly how would a person say do that? <laughs> Maybe you could ruin poverty. I'm pretty for sure me. you can get online and Google. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I think I, I, I did, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the issue is you could get online and and if you really drilled down tonight, you could you could get online and Google and go like I want to become a person who trades in the uh, uh, yeah. credit card numbers. Basically, it would be the equivalent of you becoming a metal detector guy. Yeah. You would you would be like putting the same you would be putting so much effort into it you may as well write a screenplay. <laughs> it, 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 like, Is that what you go down to the beach? You're like, hey, metal detector guy, write a screenplay. <laughs> What are you doing? Jesus Christ, haven't you seen how easy it is? <laughs> Saw the Oscars. Oh, did the, yeah. uh, by the way, I, that was a glib, dumb reference. I don't know if all the great movies won. D did the did the favorite win anything? Uh, best Actress. Ver yeah. Olivia Colman. Olivia Colman. Colman. Best Actress. I love that I movie. Thought, did they get oh, a man, so good. Any production awards? I thought maybe they got I don't something. think it got, no, I think it only got, because we were worried Black it was going to be. Black won per, Best Production. It did. Yeah. It did. And Wonderful. Wardrobe Costume, as well, I Yeah, think. Wardrobe, yeah. yeah. Ludwig Göransson won uh, for the for scoring Black Panther. He was the community uh, composer. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's a, that that that, mo that movie had a great score for for a Marvel movie. He was a Russo brothers discovery. I can't claim mm. credit for like discovering him, but I did. I because I was the creator of Community. I did have the honor of signing the special letter to the immigration board or whatever you call it, where basically it's like a 
to get a genius visa, which is essentially saying, <laughs> yes, he's going to take an American's job, but no American can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, John Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Mark Mothersbaugh. You had your chance. <laughs> Second city, Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> Mark um, Mothersbaugh's doing fine. Uh, hey, on the Devo Adam, royalties. Both your parents are super smart, right? Yeah, they're my, both my parents are uh, PhDs. Yeah, PhD yeah, and, scientists. I'm the, I'm the you, piece of shit with a BA. Is this is this where you get the uh, unraveling from? Uh, they, did they teach you like this? Did they talk to you about these things? Uh, you know, I had a lot of. So I, I mean, I, I, I had a really science filled childhood, but you know, I was also a super ADD kid and I couldn't keep my head on straight, you know? So they, they, they wrote me and they didn't write me off, but you know, I was like, <laughs> uh, they, they weren't like, this kid's gonna, this kid's gonna make it in academia. Um, uh, but you know, I, you I spent a lot of time watching like kids science shows and yeah. things like that, which ended up, I realized only after creating the show, I was like, Oh, this show is like Beekman's world. I don't know if you guys remember Beekman's world. Yeah. Um, but I realized afterwards, I was like, this is really profoundly influenced. Like I zip in, we do sound <laughs> effects for every little thing, yeah. you know, are and they impressed? Do you ever call them? Do I ever call Beekman's World? Or oh no, <laughs> that was literally my first thought. Your, like, Does my father Beekman ever <laughs> tell me he loves me? Uh, not, not yet. Uh, yes, my parents are. My parents are impressed. Uh, awesome. uh, yeah. And, and do they, they you ever get story ideas from them at all? Do they ever uh, give you? A you know, two cents on I that? got. I gotta tell you. Uh, Almost the opposite. Um, my, uh, we did an episode on science, which is one I'm very proud of because I love science. It's dear to my heart, and it's about systemic problems in science, mm -hmm. um, with science funding and with um, you know use overuse of mouse models. Like they use mice for too many things and stuff like that. Um, and I watched it with my dad, who's uh, the uh, uh, an administrator at a, a, a PhD and a vice president of the University of Oregon. And I watched it with my sister, who's a PhD in nuclear physics and a Jesus. journalist at the wonderful magazine Science. News, really good uh, outlet if you guys uh, like learn about science. And I watched it with them. And then uh, afterwards, they looked at me and they were like, you really simplified a lot of stuff in this. And I was like, no, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> don't do it. Just tell me. Good job. I was like sitting there watching them during the episode as they were like, Mm, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> kind of painting with broad a broad brush, you know. Like my dad, we're talking about problems in science funding and the NSF and and you know corporate and and billionaire funding of science and the problem with that. My dad worked at the NSF and gave grants, and he was like, no, 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 it's a good system. I'm like, you're. Th here's the thing: when people are uh, when people are so close to something, it's something I yeah. hear a lot is. Uh, Oh, Adam Ruins Everything is a great show until he does something that you know about, right? right? And like, yeah, I'm sorry that in six minutes we didn't manage to like right, meet the right. standards of your like fucking PhD, right? God damn it, people um, get so excited. That's one of the biggest problems with the internet is people get so fucking excited yeah. when the ocean of everyone dwelling together accidentally runs over a single goddamn thing about that, that that's pr important to them. It's like, yeah. it's a, that's it, that you just be excited about that. Don't get mad about it. Yeah. I God mean, damn it. You talking about, you mentioned the pixies off. Oh, fuck. I saw the last <laughs> watch. Ah! They think it's so fun. They're, yeah. like, they're like, Oh my God, I finally, I'm, I'm the person here. I mean, we did this thing on, on mouse models, which is that, you know, mice are mice and rats are overused in medical testing and science. And the reason is because the models are very, it's very easy to get the mice. It's cost effective. And it's it's replicable. You can do it over and over again, and it's like easy to get funding to do that, right? You know something? But my there dad, are problems with my it. My dad told me about that. When my dad's not a scientist, sure. But it, he told me one. He said, "You know those uh, those rats are bred for cancer." <laughs> that's and what. I said, that's what, a thing what, that people say. What do you yeah. mean? It's it like, well, they're the 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 rats are now easier to give cancer because the, all they get is cancer. <laughs> yeah, I just remember that from when that, I was like eight. That's kind of broadly true. I mean, it, it's like there's such specific there's such specific populations, right? Because they're trying to reduce the number of variables, right? Uh, when they're when they're testing, um, but as a result, their findings then become like really really narrow and just you know we talk to a fucking cancer scientist who says, hey, we shouldn't be using mice quite this much, right? It's a systemic problem in science. And on, you know, Reddit, we got so many people saying, I am a scientist who uses mice and he doesn't know anything about mice and I use mice very well, you know? And the thing is from their vantage point where they are at their particular post-grad program at the university of whatever doing their work, like they have such a specific, their whole lives 
are their little corner of it, you know, right. like sort of writ large. And I'm talking about, I'm doing an overview uh, for a general population of the field from 10,000 feet up, right? And so like those, even though we're talking about the same thing, our perspectives are so different that like they can't, you know, they can't quite go to, they can't quite go together, you know, um, and they have that be strong a version reaction. Of an episode, I'm going back to your parents thing. Is there a version of an episode where you ruin the child parent relationship? <laughs> where, which is to say, I'm both sides, both sides. Because <laughs> uh, sometimes I feel at 46, like I look back on a lifetime of kind of like um, uh, symbolizing them. Uh -huh. I go, like, oh, my mom said this, and my dad said that. And I just told that story about my dad saying they're It's like, I, it's so easy to want them to be wrong and all this stuff. And like, it, 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 I guess, I guess I, I'm fascinated by this kind of like, like Shrab used to tell me this story. Uh, Shrab's going to grow up to be a, uh, God knows what he hasn't grown up yet. No, Shrab, 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 Shrab grows up to be a comic book artist. Right. So Shrab has these stories. Like when we're like 20 and we're hanging out, and Shrab remembers being a kid, and your mom hid your comic books, and you know yeah. she was a, she didn't have. The I, had right a, I had a comic book, Ranzarox, and it had uh, on the it, and it had some racy. It was kind of like a heavy metal kind of a, a sci-fi book, and there was like some naked nudity in there. Hell and, yeah, and well, that's kind. And, <laughs> I guess I've got a. <laughs> I guess to skip ahead of it, I'm wondering, like, like do we, when we, it, it, I always, because I also I watch these true crime things, and then, like, people are so fast, and they go, like, oh, Ted Bundy, uh, Ted Bundy's parents were like this. I'm like, according to who? Fucking Ted Bundy? <laughs> what the fuck do you trust him for? Are you saying uh, like Ted you, Bundy? Uh, Are you comparing me to Ted Bundy? Yes, <laughs> yes, I am. What the fuck? I, I, think, I, think, I think if you had slightly less of a support system, uh... <laughs> No, what I'm saying is, <laughs> do we as adults like? I I wonder what field of psychology like like like, yeah. like studies is like the idea of like like I, I I picture it like a like a boat's wake like like to what extent? I know it's like nature versus nurture is a thing, but I'm saying like like people like we we tend to interview people about their childhoods. We go mm -hmm. like, oh hey so and so, what do you remember about your childhood? Well, my mom was always very encouraging about the alphabet. Oh, really? That's weird because your life ended up being about the fucking alphabet, you <laughs> alphabet scientist. But I, like, gu gu guess what? A you erased from your brain. Your mom like washing your dick too hard in the bathtub. We don't know. Like, how do we know whether washing your dick yeah. really hard makes you into the alphabet? Like, we're gonna yeah. lose that stuff because we we have this like fixation on this idea of the truth, like mm -hmm. this this biographical truth. Like, <laughs> Why didn't you become a dick washing scientist who studies dick washing? We think that's how it is, but like, uh, if, have you have you touched on any area of that? that we haven't like, done. Um, we haven't done parroting. We, we, <laughs> have you have you done that episode? <laughs> Well, there's a lot there. Um, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack. There's a lot to unpack. Uh, we, we, you know, we've never done parenting specifically because we've done, we've tracked Emily and Murph throughout the stages of life. So they get engaged, and we did an episode about their engagement. We did an episode of Adam Ruins Weddings. We did an episode about having a baby, right? And then we decided at the end, we sort of had a very soft, you know, our message at the end of that was like, hey, you don't have to have a kid, right? That was sort of trying to take that shame off, that pressure off of people. Um, it's not your chance to make the world a better place. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> to have a kid. You mean? Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I, I mean that's, uh, yeah, that's that's certainly my my perspective is that <laughs> like I don't think there's a moral imperative to have children personally. Um, and and uh, if people want to have them, great. But I don't think it's like a thing that we we have to do, right? Um, uh, so at the end, we have Emily. And Murph decide to wait, and so they don't have kids, and so, but maybe, maybe one day, you know, God willing, uh, if, if we keep going, we'll we'll do that episode. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like the the amount of like the fucking butterfly effect of parenting is so vast that I feel like almost the worst part about it as a parent, I can't imagine having to live with that because you feel like, oh, everything I do is going to be like that fucking Simpsons episode where like, uh, you know, uh, suddenly suddenly they, they turn into uh, some kind of weird monster because I do X, Y, Z. But it's completely unpredictable and right. you actually have almost no control over it at all. Like all the things that, you know, I talked to my therapist about, about, you know, my my parents doing X, Y, or Z. None of it's, none of it's you know, particularly bad, but the things that did affect me are things that I know that, that they never even thought about or that they, there were just tiny little quirks of their personality that were just, you know, like a little little bit too harsh about this or a little bit too loose about that or but more or an importantly comment, and this is the you know? thing that plagues me is, do, is don't you think it's possible that there's moments where they're like by the way all that other shit 
that you're going to remember. Um, <laughs> that's all, boy. I'm so sorry. I came off that way earlier today. Adam, you got to remember. It's so important that mice mice are overused in, or whatever the thing is. <laughs> whatever, it, and, and, that, and that it just didn't serve your... Uh, your 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 adult brain, your developing brains. It's like you create this like rocket thrust behind you, mm -hmm. where you go, "Why am I who I am?" And the memories that don't serve that narrative, they just drift. Oh away. yeah, like 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 oh, uh, old man Withers down the street was racist, and that's why I'm not. And I decided that, and so I forgot that old man Withers, uh, uh, yeah, saved the uh, space lab from. I, I'm not going to riff a narrative. That's <laughs> I'm already halfway into one. I might as well complete it. Uh, he saved space lab <sighs> with his racism. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that, I mean, that, well, that doesn't. That's in that case, old man Withers was still racist. I don't know why I. Yeah, there's this there's this conflict because I I believe. <laughs> what did, uh, what's uh, going on back there? Can't you guys just? Is it on a loop or something? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> I I believe it's just that, that every uh, time it happens, everyone feels like they have to react. The, the weird. I would, I would just put it on like a like a a, a video of a badger rotting or something. <laughs> I, anything is like a fast motion let video get of a badger to rotting. I, I'm curious. I'm a, I'm actually curious what what you'll say to this because one of my beliefs. Um, and I've read your writing on on story structure and stuff, and 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 uh, I, I I love it. Uh, but one one of the things that I believe is that. Uh, you know, real life is not story shaped. That people's lives are not actually stories, and that and that that's something that we impose onto them. And that the real and that the, we actually have an upcoming episode. Our season finale is going to be about exactly this problem because on our show we use stories to, in the way that I described, to to give people information. But in reality. Uh, the real world is not story shaped, right? Like we tell our our three beat story about Teddy Roosevelt's life, right. but Teddy Roosevelt did not have a story like that to his life. That's something I imposed on it, right? Right. Um, and so, the, in to the extent that uh, we're using those stories, we get we get further from the truth. And I think we do that for our own lives as well. Um, yeah, but at the human, same time, human life a, and human society definitely not story shaped because yeah. it's slop a doodle. Because it, 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 but what the only things that are story shaped are like the day. Because the mm -hmm. sun comes up and goes down, sure. so you can always rely on that, and like the seasons and life and death and the kind of like general nature of how this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. Like um, you're mad at this person today, maybe you're mad at them because you love them. You're gonna find that out later. Like those kind of like those things that aren't uh, um, pollutable by the fact that everyone else is going through them all at the same time. Mm -hmm. That creates static. And that, but the individual signals, I think, if you were if, if, to the extent that it's possible to have an individual have a relationship with the universe, I think that the story structure holds true. I think that mm. nature boom. and oh, oh. I just said boom. Oh, okay, <laughs> take boom. that, Adam. Uh, but I do, I, I do know exactly right. what you're talking about because then what we have to do is function together, and then so then we go, oh, Teddy Roosevelt, you know, <laughs> lesson you learned there. Mm, don't dig a canal unless you want mm, malaria. <laughs> and, 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 so, and then someone else is like, well, actually, and we're like, you're actualing me. And my story is about crossing the threshold of learning what actualing is. And everyone's right and everyone's wrong because it's like static. Yeah. It's yeah. like all signals and it just creates static. But your heart is beating every beat a muscle like go crosses it, it, it is a four act story right it's a four chambered heart but well, i i am my 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 believe I, I i agree with that except that i believe that's like a structure that's a structure that we impose right that's a structure like i believe the story is a structure of the mind out of the universe right if humanity was wiped out nobody would care there would be nobody to care about anything there would be no you know sort of like the sun would be revolving but there'd be no vantage point from which it would rise and set right um there, there would be no one to observe it right, rising right. and setting no, yeah this it would is absolutely be, about the experience have, of being sentient yeah. yeah and so that's what i bump into because i'm really i'm my what i'm uh uh, most interested in is understanding the the universe as it truly is, right? This, this is fucking. I'm just getting gonna just nosedive into Kant here, but like, um, I uh, what I'm really interested in understanding the world as it truly is, and to the extent that I uh, am imposing my own structure on it, that's an extent to which I don't truly understand it as it is. Uh, and uh, and it seems like the story is like such a deep. Uh, piece of how we think, uh, deep like characteristic of how we think that we can't escape it, even as it distorts uh, the world that we're trying to observe. Yeah, I mean, geez, 
There was yeah, <laughs> there is that idea that the only um, footage that is real documentary footage is surveillance footage. Mm, mm-hmm. Because those people are unaffected because the camera is not in plain view. But the cam, yeah, well, I mean, and then, but what about, but what about actually? But uh, like the camera was mounted uh, in suspicion. It was mounted by Macy's because Macy's didn't want their parking lot robbed. It was yeah, there was uh, a choice made by it, where every, to put every, it. everything that the human sentience touches. Yeah. It, it, it creates a perspective and a flavor. I I think if you th- there's a way to look at that to 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 defeat yourself and go, oh, so all I am is a is a conscious monkey that's just like projecting a, an illusion onto a chaotic universe you conscious go, monkey but can't you just flip that and go well, well, well flip the telescope look through the big end and uh, into the monkey and go um no uh, a monkey is tiny <laughs> yes he is very tiny and, and and the universe's point is that monkey for the time being according to that monkey and that and that that's what the monkey needs to know to actually understand the universe because as far as a monkey's relationship with the universe the only thing that's going to possibly benefit the monkey is through that telescope even though it's absolutely a fraudulent mm. telescope because the the monkey understanding what the milky way thinks won't help the monkey and the milk and it, well, it mm-hmm. won't it, it 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 it's like uh yeah i don't know i'm scared i'm scared you're scaring me <laughs> i'm so i'm like panicking and like fl- like flailing and going like look, look listen adam all, all we have to do is make good television and then die <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that I statement as well. I accept that buying a Tesla didn't help the Earth. Uh, this is as much quarter as I give you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I agree with that last statement. All you have to do is make good television and die. I mean, my, when I make my show, I'm like trying. This that's me trying to work that shit out. You know, like well, our our season finale this year is literally us like grappling with those issues right and the issues of like is the structure of our show make our show less true <laughs> oh my god that's right? a, i mean this is my, <laughs> it's my new favorite show i'm gonna like watch it thank you oh my I, gosh because it's, it's that's it's fucking meta in the best way thank you um you should you should ruin the word meta it's a mm. it's a greek prefix it means nothing it means beyond uh the it, it shores up the fourth wall it makes you identify with characters uh uh, uh do do all kinds of uh stuff like that you also have an offshoot that's like an animated thing where you just investigate history. Right? We did uh, we did animated episodes, yeah, uh, that were called reanimated history, and they were and they were specifically uh, it was the the network wanted uh, more episodes in less time, and they were like, <laughs> you like- sh- and they were like, you shoot all year. What if we do animated episodes? And I said uh, maybe, and they said great, yes, right. and then we did them, and uh, they came out quite well. Um, but uh, yeah, they're uh, uh, um, uh, is it, like uh, we ended up creating an entirely different format for them, uh, where it's me interacting uh, w- uh, with a narrator. Um, I heard Chris Parnell's voice. He in is there, yeah. Chris Parnell is the voice of it, which was incredible to to so have if you, him. So if you if you're going through Rick and Morty withdrawals, you can you can listen to Jerry narrate history <laughs> while, while an animated Adam ruins it for him. Yeah, but, uh, I really recommend this show. Like I, I, it's kind of it's one of those things where it's like easy to recommend because just watch ten minutes of it and you're gonna it's like a grape or a crack rock like, like you're, you're you're in or you're out. <laughs> you will sell all of your shit and lose your teeth over this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, grapes grapes will get you. That's what, that's what grapes that's what, that's what grapes do to me. Oh uh, man. I'm All right, a, well, like I, I think this is my most important question. It was like, it was sort of like hinted at in the beginning, and I purposely avoided it. But like, so do you believe in humanity? Do you think we have a chance? And we've only got in the two br- minutes. in the broadest <laughs> in the broadest sense. In the broadest sense, um, uh. In the broad, oh in the my God. Well, Trump, what am I supposed? What do you, What do you think my job is here? I gotta ask that. You know I gotta ask. We gotta. That. I gotta sleep tonight. What are you? What are you doing? Well, well, so he's flattering you. He's saying whatever you say is gonna affect him. <laughs> by big well, time. let me. Let me. So a thought I have sometimes is that let's see if I can do a, a pessimist and an optimist version. Uh, the, the a thought that I have sometimes is that the 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 amount of time that we have been on earth in our current form, right? Like the the modern world, right? Is is so short. Right, our population has gone up by I, I don't know I, I forget when the Earth had a hundred had had one billion people on it as opposed to seven, but it was less than two hundred years ago, right? Um, and so the amount of explosion is massive. And if you saw 
any population of any creature expand that much in that short of a time, you'd be like, yeah, this might not end well, right? Like Gi- giraffes going from 1 billion to 7 billion giraffes. Yeah, exactly. They would fuck it up at 4 billion and, giraffes. Easy. And exactly. They'd be like, well, I invented a new kind of tree that's artificially <laughs> tall because you got to justify the neck. It's they like, can't like, eat. Uh, f- f- yeah. f- Sorry, I didn't mean to derail you. No, 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 yeah, that, yeah, no. Yeah. That's exactly my, ex- that's I'm, exactly I'm, my I'm example. I'm often stricken by that. It just yeah. feels like it's almost like we're where the pat like where complete absolute cynicism and optimism meet where it's like there's eight billion of us we're yeah. horrible people like, yeah. like 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 when those lights went out in New York like decades ago and it was like everybody was like oh there she goes there goes New York and then the lights came on the next morning and they're like we ate all the ice cream before it melted <laughs> I was in New York during a blackout, and it was it was kind of nice. <laughs> I, I like 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 so few. It, it, it like we're not we're not as bad as. But at the <laughs> at the same time, at the same time, okay. So that's like the worst. That's like the worst vision of humanity, right? And and in that vision, we're like um, we're we're almost like a bacterial infection that found too much like substrate that would allow it to grow, right? Like we're growing at this rapid pace in this unsustainable way, and the crash is a coming, right? And that's how I feel sometimes. Then I feel other times that um, I think the uh, the humanist worldview uh, doesn't get enough credit sometimes uh, for how beautiful it is because uh, uh, I feel like atheists who people who want to call themselves atheists don't don't give this view often enough um, uh, because uh, you know, we if if you if you're looking at the world in those terms, right? That we live in a natural world where you know things are happen because of chemical reactions, and that life is essentially a complex c- chemical reaction, right? Humanity is a chemical reaction that's so complex that not only it it actually uh, uh, escaped the bounds of biological evolution and began a process of cultural evolution, where um, you know the the rate at which we're growing and the rate at which we're changing, the amount the rate at which our species has changed is orders of magnitude faster than any species that has ever changed before, right? Because because we've created this process of cultural evolution where things are happening in our minds right. and through language. Mimetic like, evolution yeah, that has is taken like, over. Yeah, that is like incredibly rapid. And that's something that, to our knowledge, has never happened anywhere in, you know, ever, right? Uh, and that makes us the most, like, undoubtedly the most remarkable thing to ever happen in the entire universe. Certainly as far as we've seen. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, it's it's um, it's unbelievable that, yeah. and and it, it again, it's just it's just chemical reactions, like, building upon each other. Complexity creating more complexity, creating more complexity, creating more complexity. Um, and so that is, the mere fact of our existence is the most beautiful truth in the natural world. Um, and as a result, it kind of maybe, I mean, it, I was going to say it doesn't matter what we do. It does, because we still need to behave ethically towards Towards each other and try to improve the world that we're in, but um, the fact of our existence is so uh, uh, marvelous that it's uh, uh, difficult to even comprehend. I, That's uh, my positive view. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I just spoke to Elon Musk about this. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, we were just having the same conversation, and he, t- he touched on this thing that I was like, like, like uh, a Canadian cartoonist, my friend Stephen Notley, who you can hear here on the podcast. He introduced to me a million years ago, which was this idea of information as a field, mm-hmm. uh, i.e., an organism in its own right, um, although it doesn't meet our definitions of living, but it does meet our definitions of like wants to be, mm-hmm. and that, that information as a field. Uh, it, it, it goes, it's like, if you look at just us as a sort of patsy, I guess you'd call it that, that molecular, uh, you know, molecular bumpage leads to cosmic RNA leads to life leads to mm-hmm. competition between giraffes and beavers leads to us having eyebrows and having podcasts. And the, but the whole point of it is that we invented hard drives because we've got our cells are bursting with information. Uh-huh. Our, the reason we have these chromosomes are just like so tightly wound. It's like comical. Yeah. It's like, how can you have information that way? And the answer is we barely can when, when, whenever you uh, uh, fuck and like the, 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 this shuffle has to happen. The ballet of information having to unwind and then rewind in your baby's cells. It's like, it's gotten to a point where it's like enough is enough. Coincidentally, right at the time when we're also smart enough to make new ways for information to hmm. to to go on and my big fear was always and look I'm I'm just gonna say Elon shared it so 
Bum, 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 bum. Wow. New share. He made your <laughs> he made your solar panels in your cars and like, you know, but I I like we I was like I said was like, what we're just like these like what we're experiencing right now could be intersected with like the kind of it, it's it's like 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 we could be coming to a point where <laughs> everyone who's an atheist and everyone who's like a fundamentalist could actually both agree that it's over but it, it, the, the 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 atheists are agree, are agreeing because it's like well our species was never anything more than basically like a uh, a boot drive uh, a, 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 mm. like a, like a like a, a weird kind of like intermediary like oh uh, i what do i got to work with uh, sir, you have looks like, like a time bandit to get the assistant to the guy that's like like trying to devise a universe. And like, uh, you have uh, hydrogen, you have oxygen, you know, you have these like certain amount of atoms. It's like, all right, well, uh, arrange them in a way that makes them when they bump into each other want to make more of the things that bumped into each other. And it's like like, and then just give it a trillion, gazillion, gazillion years until it, it gets to a point where okay, finally we got like plants and furry things like crawling around and they all want to like now they've got the agenda driven it's like it's on autopilot so if you're a god at this point you, you've walked away a long time ago mm -hmm. but uh you, you're growing basil in your flower box and it's like going but it's like, <laughs> it's like 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 because all it's doing is just going like look i got one every every living thing is just going i gotta beat every other living thing uh -huh. i gotta fuck more i gotta i and and, and the, but all of it is like bent towards this apex where you and i are like Oh, I, I I need to know how to make eyeglasses and this microchip and this thing and this alphabet, and that we have gotten finally right to the point where what we're experiencing is an actual spiritual abandonment of our original quest. Sorry, that Elon that, said this. That, the, no, no, no. He did. I, I don't. I don't want to throw him under the bus because I, I. I. No, this is me projecting on his shit. I don't want to. <laughs> no. like, I don't. I don't want to miscredit anybody. What do you mean? What my fear is that we are as primates. We are at the event horizon of of biologically going. Okay, what's next? And but the information is going like. Nothing's next for you, you fucking footman. <laughs> you fucking sky cap. Peace. Here's your five bucks. Uh, it's for, it's a, actually a coupon from where yeah. we're going. Uh, like you can't even spend it. And we're like, whoa, I, oh, <laughs> and, and, and that 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 is violence. That is um, nihilism. Like like that that we're we that we have a we, we're at a crossroads where we could actually. I my theory is. <laughs> If we could actually just recalibrate for a second and realize that we are direct descendants of chimpanzees and that by their standards, we are gods <laughs> and just stop. <laughs> like, could we have a conversation with a chimpanzee tonight and, th th and they would go, what's wrong? And we would go, well, we got well, a lot to do. And do uh, and like, Whoa, slow down, Jack. I can't even talk. <laughs> How many spotted leopards are hunting you? And we'd be like, well, the, the spotted leopard of nuclear annihilation. And it's like, whoa, hey, you made that up. Don't say. And the, 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 eventually, yeah. the, the conversation would end with the chimpanzee going, you're crazy. I'm going to go have an orgy <laughs> because I learned to fuck and I'm going to go extinct because of you. Not yeah. because of me, not because <laughs> fucking's wrong and not because grooming's wrong and not because, and, and, the, and, the, and if we could just realize like we, we, we've eliminated the spotted leopard. Yeah. The, the wolves are fetching our slippers. We control the weather. <laughs> um, if it rains, we, we, we don't, don't have to give a shit. We don't control the weather. We could, well, we, we affect it. We I affect just want to, <laughs> as if the only person we're going to jump in, well, yeah, we affect the weather. We but, do well, not control that, it. But according to a chimpanzee, yeah, yeah. Like, we do because- yeah. A chimpanzee can't just go indoors. We invented indoors. We yeah. do control chimpanzees' definition of weather. Mm -hmm. We can change it from raining to not raining by stepping to the left three feet. Chimpanzees could only do that to a certain degree. I, I what, what, what I say to that is that you always bragging about how you better than chimpanzees. <laughs> I think it's time. I think I, I think we got chimpanzee that come here. I think it's that's going to be my movement. Just compare yourself to a chimpanzee. <laughs> You're rich. You're happy. <laughs> 
what I what I'd uh, what I'd say to that, and what I'd say to Elon Musk if he was uh, uh, sitting here, um, is uh, I don't want my money that back. there's there's like this concern, <laughs> there's like this concern that we are uh, that the bad thing is something we're going to do, you know, like we're worried about, uh, you know, we're worried about building AI or worried about like building the next level or, you know what I mean? Um, and I'm concerned about the things that we're doing right now, right? Um, that like we're, uh, you know, we're actively, we're destabilizing like weather systems and climate systems right now, you know, and that uh, we're, we're currently building you know, a lot of people are like afraid, like, oh, the AI is going to take over, you know, um, and it's like going to come to consciousness. It's going to Skynet us, you know. Um, but the the I, there's this writer, James Bridle, who wrote a book called New Dark Age. And it's all about how we're building these systems that uh, they're not. AI, they're not like hard AI that's like, you know, trying to kill us or whatever. They're just systems that we've built that we don't understand, right? Um, that like the YouTube algorithm, like the YouTube, YouTube algorithm is currently giving people, uh, you know, misinformation, uh, conspiracy theories, uh, hateful shit, right? That's what's like being bred on YouTube. And nobody knows why. Right, because we don't understand the YouTube algorithm, and the YouTube people were just trying to get people to click more. Right, that's all. That's that's all that they were doing. Right, um, and so like that is the current. You know, that's the problem of technology that that you know I would wish we were focusing on rather than the rather than the Skynet problem. You know what I mean? Um, like we have so much that uh, we are like fucking up currently on a daily basis just in how we treat each other on a basic level. I guess know? if I were a doomsday person, I would say in argument. But your point is better. I, I, but I, but I, if I was arguing, I would say, well, no, that's the point of worrying about the future is that you you do backwards math to what you need to do today. So you go, these computers going to take our jobs. And then you now you know today you need to take a ball-peen hammer and you just smash a computer. <laughs> like, like, at yeah. least that's something to do. And yeah. I, I'm kind of advocating for the chimpanzee model because I'm like, yeah, today we could just look at a chimp before they're extinct and go, what do you think? And their unspoken answer would be, you guys are nailing it. You have <laughs> nailed it. You need to stop nailing stop it. Stop making more you shit. Are, I understand um, the alarm instinct has made you guys like like mm -hmm. very successful, but you are alarmed by each other now, which yeah. makes no sense. You're alarmed by nothing. Yeah. You're alarmed by silence. You're alarmed by happiness yeah you're uh, uh and the the the, the uh the, yeah but anyways um i uh how, how do we end the show Brandon? we do what it like we this learn? we say uh one of the greatest gifts that we got left us uh this past weekend and it is oh, geez, uh, Brody. In incredibly sad for all of us but uh incredibly happy that we got a chance to know him and if you got a chance to see him uh you you would have seen why we all loved him so much his name is brody and uh, he did warm up for community as well for you. But for the most of us in this city, he was you. You go to a Chinese restaurant and you you see the buffet of pork and delicious settings out front. But you look over the table and you see the family and they're eating something that is good for them and delicious and has no salt. And that was fucking Brody to comedians. He was that special dish that you only made in the kitchen for you and your family and you sat around and you enjoyed. And everybody else got this incredible product. But what we got in L.A. is Brody. So if you got a chance to see him, you know what I'm talking about. If you didn't, please just look up Brody Stevens. Um, a lot of clips on out YouTube. there. Of like, yeah, he's just uh, and check out his work, and we we will miss him forever. Uh, he was one of the best that ever did it. Here, here. Yeah, losing too many people. Yeah, it's uh, been a really bad. It's been a really bad couple months. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. saw I saw an episode called Adam Ruins Death, and I didn't know. I was like, well, if he ruins death, am I? <laughs> How is that going to work? I, I didn't click on it, but uh, yeah, that 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 episode's about the uh, the stark inevitability of death. Um, All right, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, don't need it, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, not not this weekend, but yeah. you know, another one maybe. Uh, Shrab, you got anything to plug? Don't you have a book coming out? No, about being a fucking, fucking piece of about? shit. <laughs> what are you fucking talking about? Without a do, book? Do I don't have, you have a, a book coming out called I Don't Have a Book, you fucking bookless fuck? This guy's no. fucking bookless. Yeah. What, how'd that chair work out for you? I like yeah, it. Are you comfortable? You like it? I like it a lot. I, I think it's know. the I best think thing on stage. Shrub. 
Hey Rob, can I pay you a, a specific compliment? Because yeah. because your I used to watch your work on Channel 101 so much, and that influenced so much of our shows and my work's visual style and like the the visual effects and the and the special effects you did and the idea that hey you can do any effect if you sell it with you know no matter with cardboard and like After Effects you know what I mean? I was the After Effects guy in my college sketch group, um, and so I just want to uh, say that like Twigger's Holiday, I watched that over and over and over again. Oh, and I, Thank you. Adam, Adam really, doesn't ruin everything at all. And I would all. still say you could, <laughs> you could watch episodes. I could find episodes. Adam ruins everything. Where I'm like, oh yeah, that's probably something that I stole from Schraub years ago. So, oh I my God, Adam, thank you, Adam. Before you go, <laughs> maybe we'll end on this super up note. What what charity did you like that you ran across shooting? What? Ch- oh, that's a, oh, what a wonderful question to oh, ask. Oh yeah, because we have a running charity thing. Did that's we, right. Have, like, that's we, right. We have a little bit of like time half to, to plug to it, a charity real quick. Yeah. Um. Uh. We. Uh, there are a couple things. Oh man. Okay. So, uh, we, uh, had for our first year, we had this incredible dude, Chris Fabricant come on. He's the head lawyer for the, or uh, head of litigation for the, for the innocence project. Love the innocence project. This guy flies around the country getting people off a of death row. Um, and I'm proud to, you know, I, I'm sort of working with them a little bit. I'm an ambassador, which means sometimes they email me and ask me to tweet something. And I always do. Um, uh, they're incredible, um, and they're really working to actively do, you know, strategic litiga- civil rights litigation to, to change the criminal justice system. They get people um, off death row, which is incredible. Yeah, they get people off a of death row, and they're trying to change, they're trying to set precedents, they're trying to do Thurgood Marshall shit, you know? Um, uh, and then uh, for homelessness, which is a really, uh, uh, such a huge issue in LA, uh, there are these incredible organizations that are housing first homeless uh, uh, organizations that just try to get people in homes directly. There's an amazing one called Housing Works California. Housing Works California. Housing Works California is amazing. Not Housing Works period, Housing Works, it's Housing Works California, you have to know specifically. Because we know Housing um, Works. Uh, yeah, as it does work. Uh, and they, <laughs> they put people, they, they go find the folks who are most in danger of dying on the street and they put them in a permanent supportive home. I've been to the facilities that they've, that they have. They're just wonderful apartments. The people living in them, you know, when you meet them, you're like, this is someone who would have died on the street. And now they're living somewhere safe and warm. Oh, and that's a good one. Well, what's the name of that one? I'm sorry. Housing Works California. And so that's a direct donation thing where it's like your money turns into money that like results in that. Uh, no, that's no, this is a, uh, uh no. Well, how, well I, I would love something to turn money into money. How's that? What no, is no, that no, no, no. Not turning into so, money. Like it's multiplying. Like, like I'm, yeah. I'm rich. I help yeah. homeless people. <laughs> no, the, uh, the, 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 you, uh, the phrase that you, from your giving episode, uh, like yeah, yeah. You, where, where Adam ruined giving, like yes. you, uh, uh, as far as like you, you're, you're talking about a, a charity that, uh, you, you give them money and they can do the most with that money. Yes. If you, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. If you give a charity money, uh, that's better than donating in kind goods, like canned goods and things like that, because the charity is able to use economies. And so of what's scale the name of the one more. that in Los Angeles, like pulls the people that are about to die off the street. And that is, them. that is housing works, California housing works. California. Um, okay. Uh, and they're they They do really amazing work. And the most important thing you can do, if you care about that kind of thing is go to your local neighborhood council meetings. And when someone proposes building a shelter, say yes, Yes, please, and then yell at the people who are arguing against it. Um, that's where they really need support. Um, so, uh, but also, uh, they will get someone off the streets. I asked them. They said for every five thousand dollars donated, which is a lot, but they can put take someone. That's how much it costs them to take someone off the street and put them in a permanent home. So, if you want to put a dollar, you know, if you can donate a hundred bucks and say, "Hey, I got them a fiftieth of the way there," or whatever. For how um, long? Five thousand dollars, like a for, night? No, 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 no. That's for that's for yeah. until. That's how much you charge? That's for the rest of their. <laughs> there's a that's pool. For the rest of their lives. Kind of that, 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 that's how much to get them in a home they can stay in indefinitely. Really? Uh, yeah. Indefinitely? Yeah. Jesus. I mean, some dinners, depending on whose birthday it is. <laughs> some dinners can cost $5,000. Well, yeah. yeah. That's true. In the last 20 years, <laughs> I can tell some stories. All right. We'll have to save those for the next term in time, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Thank you so much to Adam Conover. Thank you, folks. Dan Harmon, Rob Schraub, Chris Bora, Zach McKeever, Sarah Hill, Nolan Fabricas, the lovely Dynasty Theater, but most of all, to all of you for showing up. We miss you, Jeff Davis. We miss you, Spencer Crittenden. Good night.
Did you get any of that? It's a good show.